happy or good Memorial Day weekend, everybody. It's a meaningful holiday. And it happens to be my favorite holiday. And we are so happy to be with you guys tonight together, Adam and Adam and I, for the tradition continues. The deep end has been drafting on Memorial Day for longer than the deep end has been a thing. We love this weekend. It's kind of the beginning of summer, and it's also when more and more players jump into tournaments like the Fantasy Pros Championship, which we will be drafting in twice tonight, back to back, a mini Autothon we're doing tonight, two drafts. You're watching or listening as early as Monday afternoon, and we're recording on Sunday night. We'll have Mike Leone pretty soon, among other guests. We're excited about the lineup and the drafts. Adam's taking the first one. I'll take the second. It'll be long, but it'll be fun. Thanks for being with us. Mike Show, Adam Krautwurst, brought to you by the Player Profiler Network. We are the Deep End. Adam got the 101, and I think it's because my name is on the team, but... Absolutely. There's no doubt. I'm going to start doing that from now on. (laughs) You're going to be a co-owner until I get the 101 and I'm booting you out. (laughs) Whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. You know, whatever Mike Leone, Stacey Perez, Darren Armani, Theo Greminger, two drafts. I mean, who has more fun than people? Right. I mean, what else, what, what else do you guys want? I mean, it's not it's not live because the Player Profiler Podcast Network is just chock full of talent that there's not even room for us tonight on YouTube with this with this <laughs> lineup. There's not even room on the live YouTube feed. So we got it. We're, we're going to record it, which is better anyways for drafting because now I don't have to hide my picks. And uh, and we're going to show it for you guys Monday so you can uh, look at the board and then check out the draft. Um, some uh, absolute amazing drafters. You've heard of a lot of them. Uh, Stacy's new to, new to the show, uh, but she also competes in the main events. She's a big Kentucky drafter as well, um, and so you know her. Be fun to have her. Yeah, we've met a b- bunch of times in Vegas and in, and in Kentucky. So okay, uh, Great. she's sharp. She's sharp for sure. But um, I am on the clock here, Michael. So listen. Has no- there been any? So I'm going to host the first one while you draft, and then we'll flip it for draft two. Has there been any? indecision about what to do here for you no because i never uh, you know it's early in the process if i get the one-on-one maybe 15 times in this tournament i'll i'll start to diversify but right i have i have no jefferson this is my third or fourth draft i have no jefferson so there was no question go get justin jefferson justin jefferson the consensus one-on-one in pretty much every format dynasty well you know redraft uh best ball and there's Jamar Chase at 102, who is, I think there's a little bit more momentum. I know Matt Kelly was tweeting about the player profile account at Roto underscore Underworld was tweeting about Chase. Like, is he deserving of the 101? I've heard more and more of that recently. But, uh, you know, what you said about bears and opportunity to draft the number one guy, the consensus one in Jefferson, you only get so many chances to do that. So you want to make sure you have pieces of him chase to kelsey three Bijan four ahead of mccaffrey rb1 how much experimenting is there likely to be in this there's redraft which is a little bit early like best ball has been all the rage is this a draft where we'll see 350 dollars players try things or not really like is the pick the pick at four is that with conviction you know mostly or is it just let's be different uh, I think it's with conviction. I also think, you know, like you said, we love, this is like, I was going to say it's another holiday for us, but it actually is a holiday. Uh, but yes. to draft on this weekend, you know, there's a reason why players didn't enter tonight's draft. They were even on Twitter going, listen, I'm going to be six drinks in by the time this draft rolls around. I don't think I can hang with you guys. And so all that to be said, people are just getting their guys t- tonight. Someone's like, you know what? I'm going to go get B. John Robinson. I don't care if he's ADP the third running back. I mean, he's only like maybe what th- uh, three or four picks early in the first here. Right. Right. I'm, I'm looking at the ADP. Um, he's only a pick early. His ADP right now is the one Oh five. So it's only a pick early, but it's, it's surprising to see him um, ahead of Christian McCaffrey because of the projections. Cause you can't really project him uh, ahead of McCaffrey with all the catches and targets he's, that McCaffrey's going to get. But 
Bijan's probably pretty safe outside of injury and he's young and he's probably um, not going to get injured because he is so young. He's, his injury upside is, is much better than a Christian McCaffrey or an Austin Eckler, or even a Jonathan Taylor who was hurt last year. So um, I don't hate it, but I think we're going to see a lot of stuff like that is it tonight. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, McCaffrey turns 27 next week. So um, there is an argument. Robinson at 104, McCaffrey at 105, Tyreek Hill, Cooper Cup, 6'7", Austin Eckler at 108, Jonathan Taylor a little bit early at 109. I got to get the mojo rankings up so I can, you know, get along here. Mike Leone, who will join us shortly, picks at the 111. Mike is a friend of ours. We play Dynasty with him. He's well-known in the industry, and I invited him on to uh, hang with us tonight. And then today, unbeknownst to us, he went ahead and signed up for the draft. So he was going to come on and talk about what he saw. And now uh, he said, yeah, it'd be more fun to actually play. So A.J. Brown at 110, and he takes digs at 111. So almost through round one here. Yeah, uh, super happy to have Mike. Mike joined our podathon last year, and we're going to do another one of these on labor, maybe around that time. We'll do another one where we do – fantasy pros and we'll do the best ball tournament we usually do three of those a piece those are those are super fun and mike came on for that one too so we love what, what about all the canadian monday holidays are you busy you can't be available to those too like we have to wait until september to do another one of these listen you say that like a- before we've even started basically who knows if tonight will go terribly but you know i'm confident there's the, there's a flag day there's a is there, is there a day. is there a canadian independence day from where from yes. france from france is that from from where I'm not taking any questions on that, but Canada Day is July 1st. Okay. And Victoria Day was last Monday, so we missed an opportunity last Monday. But, uh, you know, Canada oh. does it right. They, they, they mix it, lots of those Mondays off in the summer. They know what they're doing up there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For Saquon sure. Barkley at 112. Let me get the mojo rankings. Get the mojo. Especially That's, because he's going to be on. This is a running back heavy. Brees Hall at the at – the, Two one. This is a heavy RB draft. I love that because I want some receivers at the two, at the to turn. Well, I mean, Adam, like Hall does probably work here for that point, but sometimes when you're on the end, you see it's the worst. You know, you see sort of oddball picks at the other end, and you can't really take advantage of it because by the time it gets back to you, things have kind of straightened out. But um you know, Brees Hall. Maybe that won't happen here. What is his ADP? I think it's way after that. Brees Hall's ADP is yeah the two the the, the three hundred one. In best ball, he goes around there. So yeah, the three hundred one. Okay. So yeah, the guys are interesting. Getting, the running backs are getting pushed up, um, which I don't hate at all. Um, How knows- much do you care about the schedule tonight? Uh, so I do. I was just about to say, I've got Hawkinson que- queued up here because I do. I love Hawkinson, and I and I really want to get an elite tight end early or earlier. Like it's hard. Like we've talked about this in past um, shows. Is if you don't really figure out tight end by the third, like by the time it gets back around you in the fourth, they're all they're they're all gone unless you want Goddard or something. So um, I re- right I would love tough. Andrews. I would love Andrews to fall. But I really like Hawkinson. But again, having my first two of my first three picks be a week thirteen by the first round of the playoffs is tough, and it kind of and it kind of handcuffs you the rest of the draft because it's like now you know if there's other thirteenth round by weeks like the Bills have a thirteenth round by like a ton of teams have a thirteenth round by already Justin like 13th, Fields thirteenth week by sorry, um, yeah Justin Fields exactly so it really pigeonholes you because uh, if you don't if you don't get that by. Uh, in the first round of the playoffs, if you're not already through, then you're probably toast. So um, I would like to see some things roll my way here at the two, three turn. I, I would love um, a tight end. I would love Ramondre Stevenson, but with the way running backs are going this draft, we'll see. Into round two, as Adam said, Barkley and Brees Hall at the one twelve two one turn. Then you have CD lamb to go with Diggs, Garrett Wilson to go with AJ Brown. Devontae Adams with Jonathan Taylor. That is a week 17 correlation there. Amon Ross St. Brown at 205 to the Eckler team. Tony Pollard at 206. That makes him running back seven to go with Cup. Jalen Waddell with Tyreek Hill. How do you like that? I uh, love that. That's that's I mean, he's showing that's, his hand with the with the quarterback, but I mean that's on time. Like that's that's an attainable stack. It's not that you'll always be able to do it, Hill and Waddle but it really is sort of like it's there. 
Right. That's right. Adam is four picks away. Josh Jacobs running back eight at 208. Adam sitting on Jefferson. It's the first of our two Fantasy Pros Championship drafts tonight. Redraft, $350 entry tournament. Big, uh, big time. That's what it is. That's the word. Big blank, right. big time. That's right. We do this every year. And, you know, the first oh, time. Oh, we so do. The first time we did this, I was out on the patio having some having some pops. And now here I am in a podcast. Uh, loving it. Loving the, loving the guests we're going to have tonight, too. So we're two picks away. I'm hoping for. Ramondra Stevenson and Mark Andrews would be pretty sweet. Devontae Smith at 209 to the Bijan team. Kelsey and Higgins is some week 17 correlation at 210. Adam is on deck. Chase with it's a 60 second clock. Yep. Which, if you play underdog all the time, feels like an eternity. I know. I know. Um, but yeah, I would love Andrews. Oh, but Andrews is even in week 13, too. And I love Lamar. Yep. So yeah, there's just a lot of week there. All the there's a lot of good teams in week 13. I hate having two of my first three picks, but Chris Olave okay. goes two eleven. So you're gonna get what you want here. Yeah, um, I had him. In, I had him in the queue also. So I'm gonna go Ramandra, and then I'm gonna go Andrews over Hawkinson. I might. I'm, I'm thinking of. I was the three week 13 by scared me off, but they're both week 13 by. I do want. Right. I do want Lamar though. Where's Lamar's eight eighty? End of four. End of four, but he goes earlier. Both purple teams, by the way. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go Andrews and figure it out. Okay. I, think. I think I'm gonna go Andrews and figure it out. I mean, Andrews is my is my tight end too, so there's no need to force. I mean, it's not best balls. So the stacking isn't necessarily that important. Um, Interesting how you had your choice there. And a lot of teams um, are going to go Jeff. A lot of teams are going to go Jefferson, Hawkinson. Mm-hmm. Oh, so I'm not. You know, I don't want to be tied up with all those other those, those other teams. Into round three in our first of two fantasy pros championship draft tonight. Mike Shove, Adam Krautwurst. Adam is drafting this team, and I'm just you know chirping. He is in the 101. Jefferson, Ramondre Stevenson, Mark Andrews. His first three picks as we're into round three. I'll be drafting in the 104 later. That starts at 10. And is there going to be overlap? Like, will your draft be done by when mine starts? Probably not. It'll probably be like in the last two rounds, which is fine. We can just, we'll figure it out. We'll. Oh, so, so fine. I know. It'll be. That won't we'll be figure, confusing or whatever. We'll figure out how to do a, a couple of drafts here. But Andrews also went four or five picks late here, too. So I think yep. that'll be a nice. I don't think there'll be a ton. There'll be way more Jefferson. Um, Hawkinson teams, and there will be Jefferson Andrews teams. I just like you said it already. We talked about this a lot last year, or maybe even the year before, also how it's different every year, but how challenging it can be to get tight end the way you want it when you're drafting on the end. I mean, I, at the other end, I guess this is more last year I'm, I'm thinking of, but at the other at the, at the 111, 112. Kittle and Pitts, that kind of thing, or Goddard. Like you're sort of, you're pushing, it's different guys, you know, maybe even double tapping that. But uh, in the front, it just worked out that the guys that were the best ones were all, almost never there. It really built an argument for Kelsey at 101. And I think we're there again. I think in three years, that has not changed much. Kelsey was more dominant than ever last year. So if you... You're drafting enough volume, and you're not scared of him. Then, I mean, they're going to be some Kelsey 101 teams. Absolutely, and then Mah- Mahomes with them probably too. Oh yeah, and and volume too. Like even the, especially the volume drafters, they'll be taken because they're going to want their their. It's going to get the end of August or or in Vegas where te- where you've got people that are seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, you know, whatever more fifty main event teams that are like, you know what, I just need to get my Kelsey shares up. I don't care where I pick if it's the one hundred one, the one hundred two, and they're just going to do it, which is why it's always fun too to draft in Vegas because you can get catch people passing on players that they already have a lot of. Look at the main event champs last year got Kelsey at the one twelve, probably because three or four teams already had a bunch of Kelsey and they wanted to pass on him. So. I'm doing more main events this year, FFPC, FFWC main events in Vegas this year. And so that's the that's one of the reasons why Hawkinson falls pretty pretty well here to the mid-third. 
Hawkinson at 307. The third round is Andrews to Adam at 301. Nick Chubb to the Chase team at 302. Patrick Mahomes, Kelsey Higgins at 303. So that flag is planted for sure. Derek Henry at 304 with Bijan and Devontae Smith. Travis Etienne at 305. That's a three running back start. Najee Harris to the Dolphins team with Hill and Waddle at 306. Hawkinson at 307, as you said. Metcalf at 308 with Eckler and Amon Ross St. Brown. Hertz at 309. Josh Allen, back to back quarterbacks, 310. Hertz goes to 309 with AJ Brown's team sitting next. And so maybe that would have been Hertz, but instead it's Allen. 311, Jameer Gibbs with Lamb for some wow. Week 17 correlation there. And now we're at the 3-4 turn. Before we go any further, we'll have Mike Leone on soon. Mike Shope here, Adam Krautwurst. Thank you for watching and listening to our Memorial Day Fantasy Pros Championship double play here. Two drafts back-to-back. -back. This is the early part of the first draft. I want to thank our sponsors, and here's a word from them. You know, people always ask me, hey, what is the, the World Series of Fantasy or the Super Bowl of Fantasy Football? And it's easy. It's the FFPC, the Fantasy Football Players Championship. It's a $6 million prize pool. And they've had their never-too-early best ball leagues cranking since February. And so the FFPC is the answer to so many questions. Hey, hey, where's the best place to get a dynasty orphan? Well, you can adopt a dynasty orphan at the FFPC. That's why we partner with them. If you want to play fantasy football for low, medium, high stakes, seasonal, best ball, dynasty, go to the FFPC. And don't forget, promo code UNDERWORLD gets you $25 off your first team. $25 off your first team, no matter what team it is, no matter what format it is, at the FFPC. Go do it. Under round Under now, DeAndre Hopkins, Kyle Pitts, Kenneth Walker, and Debo Samuel to start it. Adam, Darren Armani, Fantasy Mojo, who wants to join us later, I'm, I'm texting with him to try to get the timing right, and he wants to know, because he wants to be able to see the boards, if you can add him as a co-owner. Now, you're drafting, and I'm not, but you have the – can I do it, or you is there a way to – I'll do it. I'll do it. I I, I Okay. Need Pretty efficient. After after your next two picks, maybe just see if you can add him, and I'll tell him you're doing it so he can see the boards, uh, so he can comment. Perfect. So you're starting wide receiver, running back, tight end. Yes. Um, that's obviously how you wanted it. I mean that that's not something you're afraid of. No, no, I you know a lot of the, you know I use a lot of the rankings player. Uh, Fantasy player profiler. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to figure out who I'm going to queue up here. They yeah. um, they have they like they like Ramondre at the RB nine. A couple other sites have me actually higher than that. I'm pretty high on Ramondre this year, so I'm fine with him there. The two three turn, um, and and then I, I always love going elite tight end early. I don't love that I share the bye week, but whatever, I'll figure it out. It's just two guys again. A lot of teams have a good have a lot of good teams have bye weeks week thirteen, so you just kind of got to deal with it. I'm going to keep coming with that sort of question, you know. So, Adam, you did this. Are you sure? <laughs> That's right. Why did I you just do that? a lot of that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, are you sure? Did you think about this first? How many drinks did you think about what this would look like? <laughs> I want to welcome our first guest of the night, Mike Leone, established the run at Two Hats, one Mike, a uh, familiar name and face in the industry. Mike, is there a show that you think – you should be on that you have not been invited to yet in your life. Like what, what is out there for you? <laughs> you? You've done all the WGR shows. You've done most of the fantasy shows. What is the next level? Is it late night? What have you thought? What do you think here? I don't know. Um, it's probably something not fantasy football, you know, something super nerdy. <laughs> AM Buffalo. What do you think? Are, you think you're big <laughs> enough for like an AM Buffalo, a sort of a local morning talk show? I think so. I've, I've never been on one of those shows, but uh, I, maybe, um, I, uh, that's I always get I always get worried when I'm on WGR though that like my stuff's like too too niche and like the WGR audience isn't going to know what the hell I'm talking about sometimes. <laughs> well, that's that's on me because I brought yourself and 
Adam and, you know, Sigmund Bloom and all these other fantasy guys on that probably most of our listeners had no idea who they were unless they knew you <laughs> personally from work or something. Uh, and then, you know, now Joe's calling you and Jeremy and now you guys are sort of part of our family. So thank you. for I that. love it. Yeah. Thanks for uh, introducing me to everybody, bringing me on. It's cool. Round four of the Fantasy Pros Championship. We've got Adam coming up here on deck, having started Justin Jefferson, Ramondre Stevenson, Mark Andrews, Mike, Diggs, Lamb, Gibbs, Pitts. How important is correlation for you in this format? Man, I was getting excited when I thought I might somehow get the Allen Diggs stack from the 11 spot, which would have been nice. But uh, Allen went one spot before me. I think the correlation is pretty important. Combination of you know, just the season long correlation, but you hit those three playoff weeks, you know, just kind of get a team hopefully that, that runs hot, you know, um, I'm not going like mega crazy with it. Like I would in best ball. And this is my first non best ball draft this season. So it's definitely a little bit of an adjustment. So I don't know if like, like in my head, I'm like, Oh, I drafted Kyle Pitts. I only need one more tight end. And it's like, well, maybe I don't even need another tight end or, or maybe I'll, I'll take three other. Like it's just the format so different. I have done, I think five of these already, and I have two or three with only one tight end because who even knows at a certain point? You get past, I don't know, just outside of the tight end one range, and it feels like anything is possible after that. Depends on who your tight end one is. But I know I have a, at least a, an Andrews team and a Hawkinson team where there's uh, there's no backup on those rosters, which, you know, we'll see what happens. Adam, the, so, yes. I was just going to ask you, you said you've done a few of these ones. Um, there's been some picks already that like I am not seeing in my best ball drafts. And I was just wondering how normal that is like Brees Hall going super early. Um, Etienne and Harris, I wouldn't say went like crazy early, but like middle of the third. Um, yeah. And then well, the quarterbacks, the quarterbacks um, slipping a little bit. Now, like, again, not a crazy amount, but a little bit, which makes sense because there's a little bit more scarcity in best ball than uh, in, in a managed league. I don't know specifically, like in terms of Brees Hall and those guys, what I mean, I could look at Mojo like we all can and see what the ADP is. I have, so I don't have specific mm -hmm. uh, examples of that, but I have been saying on the show too, and to Adam, like pretty much weekly, I feel like maybe this sort of is logical to me that the underdog scene, the best ball scene is so on fire that yes this is 350 dollars a pop but i feel like there have been some there has been some weirdness in these drafts and that isn't necessarily bad you know people are trying different things and who knows what the thinking yeah. is but i have loved like i've done like five of these i have loved my team every time and so compared with underdog i mean you're you're in there not every best ball mania first round almost identical like kind of not as it goes along, things happen and you draft late at night and anything can happen, right? You know, anything can happen in any draft like that, but it just seems that everybody is so sharp in there. I don't know. I could be wrong. It's subjective, but I've come over here and felt really good every time. It's also like more group think on underdog too. You know, we, we, we could call it sharp, but it might, it might just be, we're all, we're all drinking the same Kool-Aid, but um, <laughs> yeah, you're right about like the variance, even in the first round, like, like digs falling to 11 shouldn't be like that crazy. But like, I was like, Oh man, I'm not getting digs at 11 and underdog usually. So I was, I was pretty happy with that, but. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah this is a heavy Mike, and kind of reference to your question. This is a pretty heavy RB draft, even for FFPC. I know FFPC okay. is thirsty RB, but I was even saying earlier, like Bijan at the one Oh four. I mean, he goes to the one Oh five, but still being ahead of McCaffrey is pretty, pretty fresh. And also JT going at the 109. I mean, five running backs in the first round is, is pretty rare these days, but believe it or not. Mm -hmm. So yes, it will and, and Brees Hall at the 201. That's 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 even a round ahead of ADP for this tournament specifically. So um, so yes, this was a running back kind of thirsty draft for sure. Cool. When you took Pitts at Mike's got a pick coming up here, so let me save that question. Adam went Judy and Godwin at four five. What was uh, the thinking, Adam? Yeah, I would have like like based on ADP and stuff, I probably would have liked to have gone Dobbins here, but I don't want to go again. I don't want like going really heavy running back early. That would have given me two of my first four picks, and also the bye week again, week thirteen. I don't want three of my first four picks having the same bye week. Um, and so yeah, Judy and Godwin were kind of the next guys up here. 
Um, I know player profiler is pretty high on Godwin or, or he's, um, you know, in, in the top 18, I think for receivers for them. So I'd really like taking him there. I got, it's at the, it's at the, the, it's at the turn. So it's hard to get like, either you're going to get great value or you're going to have to kind of reach a little bit. Deontay Johnson going start in the early fifth is starting to annoy me because I only got a couple weeks of getting him in like the sixth and seventh round. Um, now he's creeping up to RB to, or sorry, wide receiver 26. And you know, it's bad when you start, like I'm really coming around on Christian Watson. Uh, I was annoyed to see him go here, uh, but he's a guy I'm really starting to come around to just based on volume um, and his like uh, upside there. Rudy and Godwin. I think they're both great picks through round five. Now, and we had three quarterbacks out of four picks early in round five and then three tight ends in a row. That's late for Kittle. I was going to ask Mike earlier if he thought like it was close between Pitts and Kittle. Their ADP was close. And that's a feeling we we all know when you draft one and then the other lasts a long time. That could be annoying, but it's also life on the turn. Mike ends yeah. up with Mixon late five and then Christian Kirk. Adam, good news. We drafted him in uh, our dynasty startup today. Love Christian it. Kirk at 602. Mixon, Mike, boy, I mean, that's been a story already. And like there, there's there's a good lesson in what's happened this year. Not that it has to turn out well for him, but just sort of the, the group think that, um, you know, he's going to be cut and now we're pretty much to June and it looks different. Yeah, I mean, definitely some uncertainty. I did a lot of work this offseason looking like ADP value in the underdog drafts, but it applies basically everywhere. And there's some situations like the big contests like this, right? They're going to be drafts all off season and you've got to beat so many teams to win the top prize. Like you take a chance on a mix in. If they go into the season with the running back room as it is, he's going to be going in what the, I, I'd say early fourth. Um, yeah. yeah. So that's kind of like, usually I, a lot of times I would build a wide receiver, heavier team, just grab the one running back to build around. But just to get a chance. I think Gibbs too is another guy that could go earlier. So I got two running back values. I like, despite it being a running back heavy room. And then Kirk right now is one of the guys that ETR were, I think most above market on. So I was glad that he fell gambled a little bit that, that he would fall. So why, why are you higher? Cause I, that's one of the receiving cores. I'm really struggling with putting up, get my thumb down on the, on these guys. What's what's up over there at ETR. Yeah, I mean, he just – he had such a solid season last year. We're expecting the offense to hold and move forward. I know Ridley gets all the hype, but, I mean, Ridley hasn't played in a full year, and Christian Kirk was just really good. And I think a lot of people are like, well, you know, Kirk just had this really good season, and it wasn't super amazing. So, you know, let's go to Ridley for the upside. But, you know, Kirk could just have the same season and run, you know, a little bit hotter on efficiency or something like that. Like, I don't think he's going away. I don't think the targets are going away because Ridley's there. I think they're going to end up throwing quite a bit overall. So uh, really we like the pass catchers on Jacksonville in general this year. Um, so we, we just don't have the gap between Ridley and Kirk that the market does, I guess we kind of like them both. Yeah. Mike Kyle Pitts, like everybody <laughs> it's the law to have a conversation about Pitts. <laughs> so what is your sort of leading take on what his price is right now? Like if we all gone too far one way, maybe thinking for a guy who's so young that it's just like not going to happen. They didn't fix quarterback, we think, um, or just what, like what is sort of the right position on him in your opinion? I think he's about appropriately priced. I mean, I thought last year he got too expensive because some of the pat some of the stuff that happened, like to the extent it happened, it wasn't predictable, but there were definitely foreseeable outcomes where they just didn't throw a lot. Right. With Arthur Smith. And that could definitely happen again, but now the market's fully baking that in, whereas last year they weren't baking it in at all. So I, you know, Marcus Mariota really struggled was bad. I know Ritter doesn't exactly inspire a ton of confidence, but at least there's a little bit of unknown upside there that he can put it together. But I think at where he's priced right now, you can bet on the talent and just sort of hope it works out. Whereas last year, you know, he started going at, like the one, two turn sometimes, you know, and right. at that point you've really got to have a ton of confidence and not just the talent, but the, the context around him. Whereas right now I'm kind of okay. Just making a talent bet and, and hoping the context works out. I'm in a underdog bulldog graft, uh, $500 oh, 
Pat Corain is in there and Justin Herzig. I know those are both guys that you Ooh. both know. And I got the 12 and, you know, like anything can work. And we too bummed out about that. Like, fine, I'll, I'll do my best. But I was thinking yesterday about how much more I like the 11 than the 12, because at least you have something to play against. You know, you can sort of, maybe you don't know the person at all. I have no idea what their tendencies are going to be, but you can look at the 12th team and okay, well, they've drafted a tight end already or whatever it is. Do you have a like a philosophy when it comes to draft position? Do you sort of are you, are you kind of do you ever react like do you ever emote when you get a like the, the draft order or is it just like okay well this is what it is and you know fine. Um I don't know. I'm I'm kind of even keel as to where where I draft. I guess sometimes that third or fourth overall pick is nice especially in these tight end premium ones where I think Jefferson Chase, Kelsey and CMC are all extremely strong picks and then you got a better chance of of getting a better player coming back but the, the tight end premium evens out to the end of the third round sometimes that three four turn without the tight end premium can get a little bit dicey where you really feel like the, the picks at the beginning of the draft have an advantage on you because they not only get one of the top four players overall but then they sort of beat you in the third round which is tough um andrews at three one seems like a great pick for for adam for example um but again it goes a little bit deeper like i was able to get gibbs pitts tight end premium whereas if you're taking i don't know sometimes you're taking like mike williams keenan allen at the three four turn and it feels feels a little gross amari yeah that's right amari i mean amari yeah like amari and they're fine like i almost took amari but it, it feels like a drop off and you've already given, you know, up a drop off on the first overall pick. Hey Mike, on the, on, on the Gibbs pick, are you under the assumption that he, and I'm, I, I'm right there with you if you are, um, that he, it could be have an Alvin Kamara like rookie year where it's just, I know Dwayne McFarlane, I listen to him talk about Gibbs a lot. And he's talked about like, he, you know, he can, he can get 35% of the rushes and still finish as a top 10 running back because of all the pass down work. Yeah, I just think if you get, you know, Swift last year was having games where he had, you know, six targets and six carries and and was kind of getting there and winning people DFS weeks sometimes. So yeah, I just think there's a lot of room for error where even if he doesn't get a lot of volume, he can be fine. And then if he does get a lot of volume, you're talking someone that's going round one or the one two turn next year or something. So it, it feels like a pretty insulated bet to me. Mike's got a pick here coming up. Adam at the six seven went Burks or Tony and Burks. So you are one running back, one tight end, five receivers through seven rounds. And I'm thinking you're probably very comfortable with that. So comfortable. I love that I got a workhorse back in Ramondre Stevenson, got an elite tight end. Right late, lately, I've been doing a lot of elite tight end and elite QB builds, not from the 101, but kind of later on. And it's just, I felt like I've been playing catch up. So there wasn't a quarterback I loved here, especially like I would have been intrigued to take fields. He would have not been past ADP. And again, it would have been another week 13 by guy. So I was okay passing on a, on a quarterback and then just loading up on receiver. Um, I love that. I love this style elite kind of top end running back elite tight end, and then load up at receiver. And then I'll, I'll, I'll definitely start attacking uh, running back now. Yeah, sorry I'm, there's I'm drafting sorry. Oh, <laughs> do, do your thing mike we'll get back to you uh there's drafting Kadarius tony because you want receivers and his adp is good and everything like that and then there's drafting Kadarius tony because you really are wanting to invest in him which are you i really want to invest i really want to believe in him like i'm a fan of it of his talent <laughs> i think i've told this story a couple of times last year I was watching him in the in the playoffs. Maybe it was even the Super Bowl, and he makes a catch. I'm like, oh man, I can't wait to take a ton of care Darius Tony next year. And then like the next play, like hurts himself just like on his own by himself in the open field. Like I'm like, oh, but so like it's got he's not going to be consistent and stuff like that. But give him a full off season. He was a first round pick. Uh, he's got all the talent in the world. He's a little bit of a head case, but you know if he can just stay the weeks that he's healthy. Uh, I'm starting him like I I'm, I'm excited to have him on the field. Um, but, and, and then Burks is kind of a, kind of a flyer. Hopefully he gets the target share there for, for the Titans. He already looked like the, the analytics all kind of supported what he did last year. So I'm, I'm happy to get Tony and Burks here as kind of a rotation at my second flex spot. 
You'll start them in week one in the Thursday night opener against Detroit. It's a free look. Maybe you'll take him out. We'll see That's what he right. gets. Maybe he'll get more than maybe he'll get more than five snaps in that game against the Lions <laughs> in the season opener, which would top his Super Bowl number. That's okay. a great. That's a great point, Mike. I, I'm gonna. That's like people. We're, we got to start talking about free looks right now in May, where people don't even like <laughs> free looks. We don't have to set our lineups until after the Thursday night game. So that's a. It's a great point. I can think of a Lions player you might want to pick next if you were so <laughs> so inclined. inclined. Our, yes, Mike Leone at one eleven goes Diggs, Lamb, Gibbs, Kyle Pitts, then Mixon and Christian Kirk. You said you were struggling here, Mike, Evan Engram, and then Brandon Cooks. No, I think I would have liked to go wide receiver, wide receiver, but um, Addison, Dotson going before me hurt a little bit. I think Addison would have been really good there. Um, and I just had kind of the tight ends ahead of the wide receivers at that point. So even though I already had Pitts doubled up with the ability to start two and flex, and I don't know, we'll see, we'll see if Dak makes it back to me. Um, for set up the Dallas double stack here, probably not, but uh, that was sort of the tiebreaker between Cooks and Lockett there. Mike, what is the ADP worth to you tonight in this uh, in this draft? Like, it's not that many drafts. Is the underdog? I mean, it's of course different. Maybe that's useless. I don't know. Like, what is the fantasy mojo, the FFPC ADP worth to you tonight? Because I know that getting that value in terms of you know, ADP lines, closing lines, et cetera, is important. Yeah. I mean, it's always tougher early in the year because the ADP is not going to be as sharp. So like you want to respect it a little bit. So, you know, I, I don't respect it as much as I would be in August, but it's still, I think, good to get value in your draft room. And also, you know, you're kind of gambling on like building really, really strong super teams and you, you kind of have to play the ADP game and hope to get lucky a few times if you're going to do that. I'm so used to the best ball ADP that, um, you know, that's kind of what I'm looking at, even though this isn't a best ball draft, assuming the FFP slims aren't like super crazy different, at least player level. I know structurally they might be a little bit different. I usually don't use the ADP in the draft room though. ETR, we have like the roll in one week. ADP is usually what I'm looking at. Nice for you. I mean, you, uh, you find them useful and you maybe, you know, largely wrote them. So that's, that's <laughs> what you need. That's the, those are the rankings you need. Uh, Anthony Richardson goes eight oh one. Let Adam pick here coming up. Well, I'm annoyed. Is, I, can I voice yes. on before I pick? I'm annoyed because he was the guy I was going to take here. He went two round two rounds ahead of ADP. I mean, great pick by uh, who was it? I can't even see the Brees Hall at two oh one team. Mikasa, yeah, a great pick by them because he he wasn't going to make it back to them if they if Richardson if he really wanted him. But that was my. Target here at ADP, a kind of the eight nine turn, get my kind of high upside, uh, high upside quarterback. I mean, Mike is the same. That is get your guys right. Like you're one twelve drafting in this tournament in May. Like you're not going to worry about what the ADP tells you what not to do with Brees Hall or Anthony Richardson if those are the guys you want to build around. That's what you're going to do, and you got to do it that way. Did you? Uh, what do you think of Richardson's status here, Mike, in terms of fantasy this year so far? Like, is he? about right for you is it kind of crazy what does it sound like to you Richardson I think where he went in this draft's a little bit early you know a tight end premium I think he's more like you know eight nine turn and around nine I mean maybe we're splitting hairs like you said he's probably not coming back to uh Mikasa at nine twelve. Adam said he's not going to come back so if you want to make sure you get him get him you know you lose a little bit of value with the one point passing per 20 yards instead of 25 because he's not going to put up a ton of stuff in the air, but you're still just betting that he just absolutely breaks out on the ground. And like, that doesn't matter. I think overall he's like a little bit rich to me, but I get it. You know, we saw what happened with Hertz and fields last year in terms of the value they provided. So Richardson certainly has that, that type of upside, at least that, you know, fields type upside. And it seems like a pretty good environment and coaching staff for it. Adam goes Devin A. Chain, Brian Robinson at the 8 9. Who did you pass on that you feel like your mom would say you should have taken instead there, Adam? There? <laughs> well, my mom wanted Alexander Madison, but he didn't fall to the to the mm. 8 9 turn. Uh, she knows. Mom always knows. She knows. He actually went, uh, I love Madison at the end, but again, people are like, it's early in the offseason. They know this is the time to get some sort of value. So the, the, the great 
thing about Madison is taking him this time of year before Cook is gone. But there's not, you know, his ADP doesn't even have a ton of value on him right now. He's only in the seventh round. So even if you take him in the seventh, even if Cook goes, like where's he going to go up to the fifth, maybe like fourth? So you're getting, you're getting some rounds. I do agree, but I would have loved him at the eight nine turn. So I went a chain, um, Dolphins running back, explosive, super fast. He could be awesome there. Brian Robinson. I wanted Gibson, but I'll still take Robinson. I think they're going to have a one two punch. I think Robinson will be the goal line back. Um, again, I'm, I'm more of a hero RB build here, so I just need Robinson to be good enough in the RB2 position, which will be the least valuable position on my team while I smash at RB1 and uh, tight end and receiver. Or so you hope. Or Let's so take I a hope. look here. We're into round nine, so we're almost halfway through. First of our two Fantasy Pros Championship drafts tonight on the Play for, Player Profiler Network. Mike Shope, Adam Krautwurst, Mike Leone here for a few more minutes if you've got him, Mike. So Adam's team is no quarterback yet through nine rounds. Ramondre Stevenson, Devin A. Chain, Brian Robinson. By the way, just my man Davis Maddock with the Ashane. You keep pushing that De- Devin Ashane pronunciation. <laughs> I am here for it. I, I love it. I just think <laughs> Davis is great, and I just love the, the variation on a theme there. Justin Jefferson, Jerry Judy, Chris Godwin, Kadarius Tony, Traylon Burks, then Mark Andrews at tight end. We have, with Richardson, nine quarterbacks picked through eight and a half rounds. Richardson was quarterback eight, so no Deshaun Watson yet, no Dak Prescott yet. Really interesting how high he's going. And a lot of these teams, Adam, won't have two quarterbacks at the end of the night. You know, just like with tight end, especially with quarterback, I have a few of these with only one. Um, I'm not sure if you think you'll end up there the way this has started, though. Yeah, I probably will end up with two. Um, I usually do, unless I have like one of the top four or five, just for a bye week filler. Um, but I'm okay going going one QB if that's how it. If if the if there's a receiver or tight or uh, running back I really like, you know, I'm not gonna not take him just to take a backup quarterback so um so yeah but but i'll probably end up at two at this rate there's a couple quarterbacks that i I really like still damian harris then gabe davis here in the middle of the ninth round you drafted brian robinson adam gibson had gone three picks earlier from the same washington backfield would you have rather had gibson yes yeah i think he could get that uh pass catching role with the new offensive coordinator there um he could have a pass catching role there like jarek mckinnon but way better this is where I don't know how much to push quarterback in these drafts because you're looking a lot of these teams already have one and I know sometimes this is where you start to see slippage compared to best ball whereas best ball when teams need to get two three it keeps going I'm probably going to be a coward and take the quarterback <laughs> um, to get my stack I'm assuming Danes isn't going to take another quarterback with Allen and Mikasa probably yeah. isn't so hopefully I get Dak coming back in the 10th Prescott and Watson. Watson is a little bit of a faller here, but who knows? Like, I haven't missed him, right? He's eight, his ADP at Fantasy Mojo is picked 87, which would put him early eighth and worth the end of nine. Yeah, that's a guy I'm, I was I was debating between him and one of the running backs. I decided just to push. There's only three teams behind me needed a quarterback, so I was hoping to – really was it two teams? Yeah, you might get real lucky at quarterback unless yeah. someone – well, no, Watson's probably not making it past big wave, Dave. Um, within you can't you group can't group. predict big wave Dave it's anymore. He's t- very Dave. tough. It's very tough to predict him. <laughs> but um, yes, if he if he does though, that's a huge win by ADP value. Man, this see this way it's tough. Like if you're looking at quarterback, I feel like I should lock in my stack here. But at the same time, I you know I'm gonna get like probably one of two or Daniel Jones and and wave. I think we. I think with this this playoff format format, I gotta mm-hmm. I gotta take Dak with the stack. But um, if you were playing just like a twelve team league, I probably would have just pushed it even further and taken another wide receiver bet. Very interesting situation there. I but love that pick. The, like, like Dak was the other guy I have queued up. He's got so many weapons around him this this year. It's like uh, I don't love him in dynasty per se, but I feel like in redraft one year, man. I just they're gonna run the ball so much there, but they ran the ball so much last year. Like, how much more yeah. can they run it in Dallas? You know, I saw some of that analysis, and 
while it gives me some hope as I have a DAC double stack in the passing game, uh, Schottenheimer may surprise you and still manage to run the ball more. So uh, <laughs> we, we need the defense to take a step back for sure. That if the defense is dominant, it, it could be, it could be tough sliding on the play calling front, but I mean, like they should be good, right? I mean, the offense should, they've got enough skill pieces that they should be pretty efficient, even if they don't air it out all over the place. I'm worried about the super high end upside for Dak, but I think he'll be like, yeah, you know, pretty good. Yep. Yep. High wires are completely crossed when it comes to him. Like he was always somebody I defended, wanted to draft. I mean, I've had tons of Prescott teams over the years. He stopped running after his injury and then, you know, you have Jerry Jones and Mike McCarthy, and how do you yeah. possibly sign up for that? Like, they they fired the offensive coordinator because he wanted to score too many points. So, I mean, look, Mike, no, <laughs> no, no disrespect to you. I mean, you have Lamb and Cooks, and, I mean, fine. Like, it's at ADP value. Everything's fine about that. I don't know, though. Like, I guess my bottom line is I understand his sort of tepid interest level this year and I don't, I don't know if it's all because of kellen moore and mccarthy and all those things but i do think people sort of think there's a lower ceiling with him uh than maybe ever you know than maybe we yeah. have in the last few years so um i i like your team of course and i want to see him succeed it's just i mean we're he, he's a guy too that like any, any sort of bad game it's somebody that you have all the stephen a smith in the world talking about how bad he is and so, I don't know how much more Dallas can take in that way. What did I actually just say? Oh, I think that's that's pretty fair, though, on the, the, the upside. And that's where I know it's hard to think about structurally what you need to win the tournament versus, like, your player take. Like, I definitely have Watson ahead of Dak. But with the stacking and the way this tournament is, I'm hoping against hope that, you know, in the playoffs – that that can light it up for a few weeks and I get the pass catcher correlation. Plus in week 15, you'll be at the game, Dallas at Buffalo and you have digs. Let's go. Oh yeah. That clearly <laughs> I set up the week 15 stack. That was intentional all the way. Yes. 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 Gibbs in 17, Dallas in 16. Are we that good? Dallas in 16, Miami. Don't ask him about the commanders, Leone, because he doesn't have a clue when the commanders. I see my I see Miami running back double up coming up. Fear for Mike, but we'll uh, we'll see what happens. Anyway, Mike, I mean, people who are watching the deep end and listening tonight, they're not familiar with you. So please, if you don't mind, before you go, tell them where they can find you and what you're up to, please. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at two hats one Mike. I'm the director of analytics over at Establish the Run. So. You can find all my content and stuff over there. We've got rankings. We'll have our football guys championship rankings uh, or I'm sorry, fantasy pros championship rankings live um, sometime this week. We'll get those up there if you're doing these $350 FFPC drafts. So I'm um, looking forward to that and doing a few more of these. These are fun. If I can just get someone to grind waivers for me, that, that, that would be the best. I'd be pumping out a bunch of these. Thank you, Mike. When's your next marathon? Whew, I don't know. Taking a little break. We'll see. But uh, Buffalo was today, right? Buffalo was today. I went down. I watched it for a little bit. I did Toronto a few weeks ago, my first ever full marathon. But my, my body's a little bit beat up right now. So I'm, I'm taking some time, get healthy, and then then figure out the next race. Mike's too big time for, for the Buffalo one now. He's, ter- he's international now. It's just. It's Ragnar. Whole- That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. It's a little bit, uh, well, anyway, Mike, thanks for your time tonight. You're a stud. Really appreciate your friendship and your uh, willingness to join us here for the Fantasy Pros Double Up Draft. Thanks a lot for coming on. Yeah, likewise. Really appreciate it. Always great talking to you guys. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Bye. Mike Leone at the 11 hole in this draft. We are almost exactly halfway through. Adam is up at the 10-11 turn. There's been a little bit of a run on running backs here. And Adam uh, appreciates that and drafts Rashad Bateman to go with Andrews and then Tank Bigsby. Oh, he's flying up the boards, Mike. I love it. I love it. Jacksonville? Jackson, don't do that. Don't act like you don't know (laughs) who Tank Bigsby is. What I want to talk about is Team Red Crayons, the team at the 108. Me too. Stacy Perez yes. is 
the owner of that team. And this is my first interaction with Stacy. Stacy Adam says he's had many meetings with you. So um, anyway, I'm glad to meet you. Thanks for being on our show. Yeah. Hey, Mike, it's so nice to meet you. Um, thank you guys for having me. This is great. We're having a great time. Team yeah. 108. Let's let's run it down here. Lamar Jackson, yeah. going by positions. Lamar Jackson in the fourth round. Austin Eckler, Samaj P. Ryan, Amon Ross St. Brown, DK Metcalf, Brandon Ayuk, Jordan Addison, Gabe Davis, Jameson Williams, yes. six receivers, and Darren Waller. How is this going? So, um, you know, at first, it, it's a little outside my comfort zone. So um, my partner Jim and I are doing this kind of together. And so he's in California and I'm in Florida. So we're just like completely on opposite sides of the country, right? Um, and we are so adverse to taking a running back first that Eckler was there and it fell and we just thought, all right, I, we have to do it, you know? So, so again, like I said, this is just really outside our comfort zone, but I kind of like it. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of digging it. You know, um, I don't have too much Lamar on too many of my teams, um, or Waller for that matter. Um, so I think we definitely need to hit up some running backs here. We were going to do a running back in that last round, but, um, Jamison Williams fell. And so we wanted him to add in there with, um, Amon Ross St. Brown. Um, and it looks like they're, uh, they're getting a little sparse. So I think we're going to have to definitely take a running back here coming up. Yeah, I'm I'm annoyed you took you took Lamar. Lamar is my guy. Not that he was gonna fall <laughs> to the four five, but um but no, yeah, listen, I, I went heavy receiver too, and I I'm I'm comfortable with it. You'll get you'll get comfortable with it. You just gotta you gotta embrace it. That's all. Yeah. Um, and I was so pleased that I got Jordan Addison. Um he's one of my favorite rookies this year. Um, I'm really excited about him and his opportunity in um in Minnesota. But you know who got snatched for me um in that round was Sam Laporta. Um I am a huge Sam Laporta fan and that might be to my detriment who knows with, you know, first year tight ends, but man, I, I really like him, um, especially with my little Detroit group that I was trying to put together. So, I like that a lot too. You know, Eckler. So I was very reticent on Eckler for the last couple of months lately. I mean, he got a contract, his contract was reworked and I know Stacy, you're coming up here. So let me ask Adam first yeah. and we'll talk about uh, Eckler some more. You, you know, you and I have talked about him, Adam, on the show a few times. I just was never – there was always somebody else there that I liked at least as much. But um, now it looks a little bit safer. They could still bring in someone else, and you know what the upside looks mm -hmm. like. So what do you think about Adam uh, Eckler's value? Because he hasn't really moved that much either in ADP. Uh, yeah, I think he's fine. At the one. You're talking about Eckler, Austin Eckler? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, he's fine, especially at RB. RB3 is fine, you know. It's just if I was gonna go Eckler, I might be inclined to go, which is, might be why Stacy's a little uncomfortable. <laughs> might be inclined <laughs> to go running back a little er earlier, but yeah. if Eckler hits, like the team is sensational, right? You got an elite tight end, elite quarterback, loaded at receiver as far as um, numbers go. You know, heavy receiver, Gabe Davis at wide receiver forty five is sweet. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, so yeah, no, I think it'll as long as Eckler is healthy, I think it'll be fine. Yeah, I'm uh I, I really I like Austin Eckler as a player. Um, you know, so I, I didn't it's not like I didn't like take him. It's not like you know, like I'm gonna be very upset that I don't have him on my team, um, or that I have him on my team. But um, but yeah, I'm just not used to taking him this this uh this early. But um I have i I've and all my drafts that I've been doing so far, I end up this section of the draft, like eight, nine, ten. So I've had so many teams that are Stefan Diggs, AJ Brown, that I was like I don't want to do that again. <laughs> like, let's try to mix it up a little bit, get somebody different in there. So that's, that's kind of what led us to do Eckler. But like you said, I mean, they just, you know, redid his contract. Um, I think I might've been a little bit, you know, more nervous to take him before all that happened, but um, you know, I feel really good about him there in that offense. So no, no big concern there. Just, just making me a little f uncomfortable with that green there instead of a yellow from the first round. <laughs> well, this player is green too, but if you're thinking in terms of, okay, I got the 108 and Diggs and Brown are a little bit stale for me. Mm -hmm. The first name I would think of is Bijan Robinson, but here he goes at yeah. four. So, I mean, maybe you were prepared to take him, but didn't get the chance. Oh man. I would, if I, if Bijan had fallen that far, oh my gosh, I would have jumped on that 100%. I love that. It's like, if Bijan would have fallen to the, to the 108, yeah. Stacy, you were in that you were in that FFPC one or sorry, uh Kentucky one yes. K we did on uh Super Bowl Sunday. And I think I took him as the fourth or fifth running back. And I'm like, man, I probably just took him at his peak. And here we are. If he would have fallen to the 108, I would have taken him. So 
Oh my gosh. Goodness. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, this is the earliest I've seen him go in any of my drafts. Usually he does going around like the, the eight, seventh, eight, ninth pick. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, gosh, I, yeah, I would be so happy. I have a first overall pick in a dynasty league I'm in and I can't wait to take Bijan with that. <laughs> does it matter to you in that how good your team is? Because I know I've read with Robinson, like the running back lifespan and so, mm -hmm. so many people are so hyped for him. Yep. that maybe you want to make your pick first. I don't want to get in your way, but I wonder oh, just sort of like, is there a scenario where you, I mean, Adam, if you want to go first, mm -hmm. so Stacey can have a minute. Like, is there a scenario where you, where you would want to trade out of the one-on-one in Dynasty? I don't think, I mean, I guess I would rather, yeah. I mean, I any player's tradable. So Bijan is tradable. Mm -hmm. So certainly the one-on-one is tradable, but I feel like, you know, once you've known probably that you've had the one-on-one for a while and you've, you know, if people were like, oh, I'm heavy at running back. Well, you should have maybe already traded some of those running backs away, so, knowing that you're going to add Bijan needed to your team. Like Bijan's a, a centerpiece for the next, you know, seven or eight years. So I feel like having him is a, is a really nice piece, piece to have. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I mean, I think there, there, of course, there's some situations, right. Where if somebody offered me, you know, a ton, I would absolutely take him um, or, you know, a trade for him. Oh, there goes my beloved Sky Moore. Um, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the, in the particular team that I have the first round pick, um, you know, like Adam said, I mean, he's, he's a talent that's going to be there for, you know, years to come, you know, barring any sort of catastrophic injury. Right. So I'm, I'm totally fine with hanging on to him in that particular scenario. Now, last year, um, my team also had the number one pick <laughs> um, and uh, I did trade away Brees Hall. So that one, I, I didn't mind as much. Um, probably not as big on Brees Hall as I, as I am on Bijan. Um, but yeah, super excited to have him, have him join the squad this year. Stacy Perez is on deck at 12.05, 12.04, just to, so everybody, in case anybody doesn't know this, the team name is Michael Block is a tool. This is the golfer who <laughs> is a club pro and finished 15th at the PGA championship just, uh, what last weekend, in but actually that, that in Rochester, that actually has been this player's team name for many years. People might think that it's, it's a reaction <laughs> to what's happened in the last week. You know, then he, he got 15th and then he made the hole in one. And he's talking about how he basically would be better than Rory McIlroy if he hit it as far. And, you know, so uh, that's not just a reaction to the recent events. Of course. All right. Pace Brown to yes. interesting, Stacy. Like, so yeah. what is your your bet on the Bengals with the mix in uncertainty and P Ryan's departure. You've got other guys mm -hmm. who've been there too, with the Bengals, like is Brown uh, sort of a big bet for you or is it just more of a value pick? Yeah, I kind of a little bit of both. Um, you know, I think, you know, the situation with Mixon, you know, potentially there could be some issues there, you know, maybe he faces a suspension this year. Um, and if not, you know, then, okay. Then Chase Brown is the number two behind him, I think. Um, and in a pretty elite offense. So I'm, I'm definitely fine at this point, you know, I'm, I'm taking the second, uh, running backs, right? Like there's not any more starters left on the board. So that's where I'm targeting. So guys that definitely have potential guys that have opportunity, um, especially on really great offenses. And I just did realize the, um, I get <laughs> in taking P Ryan, taking the former backup for Mixon to, uh, the current backup. <laughs> fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. Look at these, Adam, look at these, uh, if you, if you have time here yeah. with your pick four picks away, these teams at 12 and six that have gone the same kind of two tight ends and two quarterbacks in a block together in the middle teams that had not taken quarterback or tight end at all before round eight. I mean, that makes sense, right? Yeah, exactly. Load up early on the, and then, you know, it has to fall right with the, with the tears though, kind of with the sweet spot. Um, and I like, you know, just looking, I like Njoku and I like Jawan Johnson, um, stack it with Deshaun Watson for Njoku. I really, I really like that for for, for them. Um, wow. uh, Richardson, I want, I wanted Richardson, um, Komet and Schultz. I'm not, I'm not too high on. But again, you know, you're taking two of each. Um, rotate them depending on the schedule, on the matchups and stuff, and load up on the other positions earlier. Um, so yeah, just interest some some interesting builds. I definitely don't hate that that at all. I'm doing kind of the same thing, but waiting a little bit longer for uh my quarterbacks here time is up here stacy we were talking about that team team six with watson falling like a couple of rounds he yeah. ends up he or she ends up with watson and joku and then tua does fall to him or her at 11 to go with hill and waddle so that person is probably pretty happy 
I would think so. I mean, last year I also had a Hill and Waddle stack, and I got to tell you, that was my favorite teams. Um, you know, they had a little bit of issues, right, when when Tua was hurt and they kind of had some uncertainty there at quarterback. But um, but still, I mean, they still put up decent numbers. Uh, I I really I, I like that team. That's a, that's a really fun team. Especially yeah, the, oh, Pacheco. They've got Pacheco also. That's one of my favorite running backs this year. You know, you're about Pacheco. You're about Sky Moore. Mm-hmm. You, you drafted <laughs> McKinnon. Is that your team? I, you know, it's not my team. I'm actually a Packer fan. Um, but you got to respect the Chiefs, right? They got they they've got some pretty good players there. How yeah, do you think okay. Jordan Love will do? How do you think Jordan Love will do? Oh God, Oh, man. So, you know, I want to be optimistic, right? I, I really want to, but. Honestly, I'm kind of staying away from the Packers this year as much as that just hurts my heart um, just because I think they're going to be a terrible offense. Um, I, I I just could not take Christian Watson at that price at all where he's at. I, I think I do. I really think it's going to be a really rough offense. Um, the only guys that I'm really kind of looking to take really are probably Aaron Jones, maybe A.J. Dillon if the price is right. Um, those guys, I think their, their production is probably going to remain pretty much the same, but Oh man, Jordan Love. I I I I feel for him. You know, we don't know too much about him. You know, he's kind of been there in Roger's shadow for so long. So I, I hope he's good, but um, I don't I don't have high hopes. Let's just put it that way. Will Will you say sort to to all of that how you end up there? Because like I can't figure out. My heart isn't in it with the Packers, but I can't <laughs> yeah. figure out what to do there. I can I can certainly make both arguments. First round pick, three mm-hmm. years to watch and learn. Like yeah. maybe good coach. I think. Yeah. But then also other reasons to sort of wonder if he's ever, ever was that good. How do you decide which side to be on? Well, I kind of think that if he, if he really was that good, right. That they probably wouldn't have tolerated Rogers nonsense last year. Um, okay. I, you know, as much, and I, and I love Aaron Rodgers. I'm bro. He's like one of my favorite quarterbacks. So I say nonsense in love. Um, but I don't think, you know, the team, I don't think they would have agreed to, you know, extend him, pay him all that much more money. Um, if they were really convinced that Jordan love was the real deal, right? Like why even do that to yourself? Um, if, if that's, you know, if you're convinced that what you've got behind him is good enough to, to take over. So, um, Marvin Mims, Oh, I knew I should have taken him last round. <laughs> Marvin Mims, everybody's favorite lately. Marvin Mims. Tracy must be so, a dynasty player. She's a high high on the rookies. Oh gosh. I know, I know. And I, I have to remind myself when I'm doing different drafts, like the dynasty is gonna like break my brain in here. <laughs> <laughs> you know what though? I like drafting rookies, especially in this range in this tournament, because it's May and the season is three plus months away, and you are going to want to cut people. Yeah. from your roster like you are going to have to find room for the waiver wire guys and it's just too flat when you get to the late rounds versus what's left on waivers so i am myself like perfectly willing to take chances yeah. once you get this especially if you like where you ended up through 10 rounds to me after that it can just be fireworks because there are going to be so many changes to rosters once the season you know gets going is that taking it too casually Adam, or what do you think? No, I mean that's that's an interesting way to to, to look at it, I, and I think it's more of a, um, I don't know, I want to say it's more of a dynasty view because you're going to draft a lot of dynasty drafts usually longer. You're going to have a lot of guys long shot fifth round rookies that aren't going to make the team, but I think that you could definitely use that here too uh, when you're drafting that this early because you're not going to have that type of strategy or that type of thought process in late August because you're going to know who's made the team, you're going to know who's looked good in the preseason. So um, it's kind of an edge or another piece of information uh, to kind of use here in these, in these uh, early drafts. Adam's team from the one Oh one. It's Geno Smith season over there. 12, 12 quarterback one on that team. You've loved this draft so far. I think for the most part, how do you feel about having Geno Smith be your guy? Yeah, I love Geno Smith this year. I mean, they've loaded him with, with, with weapons another year in that, in that system. So, I mean, I don't think you're going to draft another quarterback or I'm sorry, another receiver early, arguably the number one receiver in the draft class and Smith and Jigba, and then go back to like pounding the rock. Now I say that and they spent a second round pick on Zach Charbonnet, but I think that's just having more weapons for Gino is great. I missed out. You know, I wanted to Sean Watson. I waited a little bit too long. Um, I would have liked some of the elite guys, but as you can, and R- Richardson went two rounds early. That was a guy that I kind of wanted to take a flyer on, but I'm, he's like my plan C. If I don't get an elite guy or like a Watson or Richardson or even Prescott, 
Uh, I'm I'm really fine with Geno Smith. The problem is not knowing, um, not being able to stack him because not knowing that I, that's the quarterback I'm going to land on. Um, I don't have any Seahawks uh, re- receivers, but that's okay. It's not best ball, and um, I'm fine. I'm fine with it. You think you'll pick a second quarterback? Yes, I've got I've got a couple queued up here. Derek Carr was not one of them. Um, although I'm a huge Saints guy this year, you know, for that one oh. Almania team that we drafted. Yes. Um, but uh, changes but, every day. Changes <laughs> with every draft. Our favorite, our new favorite fantasy team. Right. Changes with every draft. Yeah. <laughs> Stacy has picked Zay Jones with yeah. her thirteenth round pick. One more receiver. Do you have a sort of build in terms of by position that you're striving for? I mean, every draft is different, so you want to be, I'm sure, a little bit flexible. But are you hoping to end up with X number of players at Y positions here. Well, I, I, you know, I always like to go heavier on wide receivers. um, And especially with this group, I feel like running back later, you have so much more options. Um, You know, once you get down pretty low, the the receivers get a little ugly, Um, especially kind of this group that's going to be here after. I I like Zay Jones, but after this, it's a little, little, little shaky. Um, But I think, I think after this, they'll probably add a lot more running backs because I'm pretty low on there. So I think I'm probably done at this point with receiver. Um, yeah, I've got one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, seven. So that's a lot. Seven. So <laughs> especially in a 20-man roster, I think I'm good after seven. Um, usually between six and seven is where I go. Um, those are just, you know, like I said, th- those are my comfort zone. I like the yellow on my board. Mm-hmm. Well, Stacy, we're just meeting tonight for the first time. I'm so glad yeah. that we got to chat here. We'll uh, keep you, if you don't mind, for one more pick. But yeah. in the middle, if you have time to think about it, sort of maybe if you want, promote yourself, tell everybody watching and listening where they can follow you. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, um, you guys, um, I'm on Twitter at, at Stacy underscore Perez 83. Um, I'm part of the Fantasy and Frames family, and um, I host the Dynasty, Dynasty 365 show on Wednesdays. And then um, Stephanie Miller and I do a best ball draft show on Thursday nights. Um, so uh, we're doing all sorts of things there. I just joined up with the group in February and – um, you know, kind of new to the fantasy football, like content creation world, but um, I'm just having a blast so far this year. It's such a good group to work with. They've been so great and kind of helping me along and, you know, kind of teaching me the ropes and um, so, so grateful for them and, and everything. So, um, but yeah, but that's where you can find us fantasyandframes.com and, you know, everywhere on social media, you can, you can look us up there. I want to ask you two more questions, but yeah. you're also up. I am. So, uh, Adam, <laughs> do you have any questions for me, or should I ask you a question about no, I, Hubbard? I have a funny story. I know you love stories, Mike. I was uh, Stacy yes, was going to actually inform me, so I had to take Brian Robinson tonight in homage <laughs> to Stacy because in a live draft in Kentucky, probably the last time her and I were drafted together, although maybe we drafted mm-hmm. in Vegas, um, I draft Brian Robinson, and she sends me a message from across the table. Hey, just an FYI. <laughs> Your RB2 just got shot. I'm like, oh. Oh, wow. <laughs> Stacy is who told you that news. Is she kidding? And then my buddy Chris, uh, who you've met, Mike, Chris comes running over because he was drafting another team of ours across the lobby there at the, at the Kentucky Fantasy Football State Championship. He's like, yo, I just took Brian Robinson. I think he just got shot. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> she wasn't just busting my, my chops. No. So, so tonight, I, you know, I, I fell into Brian Robinson in homage to <laughs> to the to uh, <laughs> Kentucky. <laughs> well, I was so upset that you sniped me on that Robinson pick. I think in that particular draft, we had waited so long on the running backs, and he was one of the ones that was still left on our list. And um, I know no surprise that I waited so long on running backs, right? Um, yeah. But uh, <laughs> he was there. I was so mad. And then a few minutes later, we get that notification. It pops up and it says that he was shot. And I was like, "You've got to be kidding me! That's yeah. wild." Maybe. It was on a Sunday, right? Wasn't that like a Sunday evening when that? Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was one of our last drafts, I think, for the weekend. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, Stacy, you just drafted Dawson Knox, and yeah. I, I can I can get with that. We're we're in the Buffalo area, and I feel like Knox's role will be very similar to what it's been. Mm-hmm. Which you know, you want to be careful with drafting him too early these last couple of years, but I don't think Kincaid. Huts in the Knox, which is kind of mm-hmm. difficult for me because you always want to question the teams when they're talking about he'll play in the slot. You know, we're going to do all these different things because they always talk like that. But I think that's probably true in terms of the Bills. So, you know, I think uh, Knox might have about the same value he's had. 
Yeah, I agree. And, you know, as much as I really do like Dalton Kincaid, um, one, his price is entirely too high for me. Um, but also, you have to remember, right, who else do we have on that team, right? We've got Stefan Diggs, right, your alpha. Um, we've got Gabe Dave. We've got James Cook in there. And then we've got, you know, Dawson Knox. And you've got Josh Allen, too. So, you know, you know, historically, first-year tight ends don't always produce as much. And then you're going to have a guy come into a team that's already so stacked in their offense. So I don't necessarily think that he's not going to have a role. I just don't know that it's a role where I want to take him where he's currently going. Um, if he's going a lot lower, of course they would, because um, I think he's a great talent. But I I don't think that it's at the detriment to Dawson Knox. I think he's still going to have a role there. I think he's still going to be um, the tight end of that group. So um, I, I love how he's how low he's going. So I've been snatching him up everywhere I can. We have defenses going now. That's different from underdog life. Two <laughs> yeah. defenses in the 14th round, San Francisco and Dallas. Stacey, it's been a pleasure. I know you've got the Packers banner back there for those watching, <laughs> and then also the Atlanta Braves, yes. right? Those are your those yeah. are your teams? The Braves are my team. Yeah, I had to, I had to wear my little Braves shirt tonight because they're on Sunday Night Baseball right now and absolutely crushing Philly. So uh, shout oh. out to the Braves. <laughs> Good for you. Good for the Braves. Thanks for your time tonight. Good luck with this team. Thanks so much, Mike. Thanks, Adam. Guys, it was a pleasure being on. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks, Stacey. Our pleasure. Bye, Thank guys. you. Stacy Perez, Team 8, Red Crayons. We're in the 15th round of the first of our two Fantasy Pros Championship drafts. Mike Chope and Adam Krautwurst on the deep end, brought to you by the Player Profiler Network. You know, these people, who, who are you thinking? Like, people who said, I, I'm not going to draft tonight because of the drinking during the day. But they're so special. Like, what do you think I did all day? You and I, <laughs> we both went to youth sports today because Class. that is our passion. Yes. That is our passion. And I went to, so I had one of these baseball tournament days where the team had lost three games Friday and Saturday. But they still set it up so you play in the morning. And then if you win, you play again. And then if you win again, you play again. And, you know, maybe you get a certificate for ninth place, something like that. Ugh. And this is very complicated as a parent because you definitely want your child to do well and you want your friends that you've met on this team to do well. You also are watching your beloved Memorial Day weekend Sunday just bleed away from you. Like the pool is a, it's just sitting there by itself and the bar is sitting there by itself and the pets <laughs> and the relatives and the hot dogs and the hamburgers. So, um I think we did about as well as I would hope for, which is we won one, this baseball team, and then lost the second one. And, you know, got home by uh, five instead of having to leave the game, the, the, the so-called championship game early for ninth place so I could, right. you know, jump on here with you. Right. Uh, I Even worse, my so both my kids play travel soccer, and my uh, 10U player today, he had a, he had a scrimmage today. A scrimmage a scrimmage between all the tournament Jeez. games like they need to scrimmage uh, so i went to a scrimmage opened up the swimming pool by the way i mean just what a weekend opening up the pool grilling out we got a big big party here to here tomorrow we had some people here uh this evening but uh yeah right exactly who do you, who do you think you are all these people i can't <laughs> draft because i'm partying what do you think we're doing Come on. A scrimmage on a, a holiday, scrimmage. the best holiday of the year. We got to get a scrimmage in because our kids are not, our five year olds are not ready. They're not playing enough. We're, they're just yeah. not playing. Play crazy. Enough. They're not getting enough work in. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins. Yes. Kirk, <laughs> Kirk Cousins. At 1412, then Gerald Everett. Boy, those are both good ideas, I think. Yeah. yeah. Kirk Cousins. I needed another QB. Lo I mean, he's got some upside to. Weapons there, paired him up with my number one overall pick, Justin Jefferson. And, I, you know, the bye weeks aren't an issue any, anymore. I've done pretty well there. I've got Geno Smith, who will be my QB. I mean, I'll rotate these guys, to be honest with you, based on matchups, Geno and Kirk, and, and, and now I have someone that can play during the week 13 bye. So, uh, and Everett is my, you know, my backup tight end. I'll never, you know, really take Andrews out. But Everett can be a guy if there's an injury or something like that. So, uh, and, and a tight end 24, I mean, come on. Uh, that's crazy talk. So yeah, I'll take him there. Don't have sort of an intuitive feel for ADP in this tournament as we speak. Like that is, I'm going to be drafting at 10 in the second one of these, and I'm going to be scrambling because I'm going to want to see what the grid looks like. I mean, the, 
ADP grid and then try to put that against who I like and what kind of team I want to build. Uh, so that is helpful. I feel like with underdog, I've been in there a lot. I think you have too. And I think I sort of have a, it's not that different, but a sort of a instinct for the ADP and where's good value and where the receiver should go and the running back should go. We've seen in this draft, running backs get pushed up, right? That is a takeaway. Yeah. Especially in this one too. Um, it's, it was wild. Even I've been in a bunch of FFP season. They haven't been pushed running back up like, like this. Um, and, and it affects the whole draft, right? Of different positions and different spots. You know, I just took Gerald Everett as ADP is the middle of the 13th round. I got him two rounds later, you know, so it, it ends up affecting kind of the rest of the draft. Um, and yeah, and you kind of have to adjust on the fly as you look into the, okay, even, even Leone, this is just kind of his first FFPC of the year. It was like, man, do they, when they make sure generally go this high, like he noticed it immediately. And the answer is no, they usually, you usually you don't get five running backs in the first round. Um, you know, Taylor, or, you, or you, you might get him a little bit Taylor at the one, two turn Barkley in the second Brees Hall goes at like the two, three turn. So, um, so you got to kind of see that and adjust immediately on the, on the, uh, on, on the fly. Uh, I didn't have, I couldn't, it's hard to do adjust the one one cause you just kind of take whoever's there, but in the middle of the rounds there, um, it certainly helped. You get the fifth running back into round one. If the team at the 12 wants two, and that was what happened here because the receivers down there, Diggs Brown, Adams, Garrett Wilson, St. Brown. I mean, it's just like so rich. So if, if the team at the turn wants two, then you'll see one twelve be a running back because they're not going. You're you're right. There are not going to be many of these drafts where five running backs get into round one. Well, the other thing too, like right, if the twelve's like, hey, I'm going to go two, and somehow what happens is when Jonathan Taylor gets picked at the one oh nine, it's like, okay, well, if I want two, you know, T- Tony Pollard and Josh Jacobs ADP is not at the, not at the turn. So like Mikasa although I like a bunch of the picks, um, a bunch of the specific player picks, that was a like, hey, I'm taking the two running backs no matter what build, and I generally don't like to do that. Like reaching a, an entire round on Brees Hall, I feel like probably wasn't the best move. I would have just taken a receiver and moved on. Picked DeAndre Hopkins at 401. How do you feel about him now that he has been released? Yeah, we talked about this the other the other day. I um, I'm a little bit I like Hopkins more now. He's like more draftable to me, even though I don't even know where he's going. But I'm assuming it'll be a better situation than a quarterbackless Cardinals. But I still mm-hmm. I, just even looking at the three four turn, I just don't like it. I mean Pitts, I love Pitts, but the question marks about around the quarterback position there. You know Kenneth Walker. There's so many question marks there with Charbonnet. Uh, it's just unless you want to take an elite quarterback there, like I just don't like it. I, I much prefer now that we're doing these, you know, I, I, I think we did a pod a couple weeks ago where we were talking about like what draft position do we want? Do we like the most? And I said, Hey, in the FFPC, give me a top four pick. And I, I'm even more uh, adamant about that now because I've done some drafts recently and I haven't liked them and I've sent them to you. And I'm like, man, I don't like this draft for this reason. I love this draft tonight of the way kind of, the players fell and the sweet spots of each position fell. So uh, this draft might not make me any money, but it, you know, I feel really good about it. I found out both of our draft positions tonight from you in the middle of the, the baseball a thon. Yep. And I mean, I, I, yours, Adam's about to pick here. Getting one Oh one is hilarious because I am all, every time I get a one Oh one in a draft, I am texting like the first thing I do before the draft even starts, I have it done. I'm I'm screen grabbing the one Oh one, you know, I've used it for my Twitter avatar now. Like here, Adam, guess what? This is happening again. And you, you sort of laugh and (laughs) Adam is always coming back at me with, I never get the one Oh one. So here I I might've said this earlier, like in this draft, our names are both on the entry and here we are drafting first. I love 104 yes. for this draft coming up in 15 minutes. Like that is just a great spot. You know, I I, I remember Mike Leone talking about McCaffrey there, and you can't not love Christian McCaffrey, but I have liked receiver or even Travis Kelsey more than McCaffrey in that spot. But we'll see. I kind of hope he goes in the top three. I don't have to worry about it. No one 
in the industry is better at analyzing these drafts and assessing average draft position and what is actually happening here than our friend Darren Armani, fantasymojo.com, whose research and data we use all year round in analyzing drafts and strategy. And Adam is holding up his shirt for those. All right. Let's go. Who are listening? No, first shows. It, first it's shows, all baby. it's all happening for you, Darren. It's all happening just here on the deep end. What, what a thrill <laughs> this must be! How exciting! We're doing redraft. This is great. I'm so sick of best ball already. Thank you. <laughs> I'm exhausted from it. All the all the boards look the same in best ball to me. They do. They it's do. Like, I don't know. <laughs> it's, your, it's like buying lottery tickets. <laughs> it's the beginning of summer and the beginning of redraft here uh, tonight in uh, the Fantasy Pros Championship. How's life, Darren? Good. It's going well. Um, the family's out of town. They're actually up at Niagara Falls, so that's that's a big Whoa. really whoa. Yeah. Wait, I, do I see you them? See them Mike? Are they out, they're out the front window? Like yeah, maybe they're, maybe they're behind you. They'll stop by later on. <laughs> yeah, so no, it's good. It's good. I've been uh, diving into the data for for the the. It's it's still kind of awkward. Fantasy pros versus football guys. But we'll get used to it, but. Yeah. The vibe is a little different this year. Ooh, um, how so? Talk to me. <sighs> the, the, I'll, I'll say this. The usual cast of characters that are in there pounding the drafts early, they're not in there right now. Um, some of some of the, the, the heavy players of, of past years. So it's really – it seems like a lot of newer people, um, which is good. Perfect. Because the drafts tend to get monotonous, I, I found. Um, they all started to look the same, so they're they're much more, much more varied. Um, so yeah, but I'm looking at this board that you got. So I, I noticed I, I was I didn't hear it like this discussion that you had at the beginning. Um, so what Adam? I noticed I was looking at some data earlier this week because you know how all the quarterbacks have risen, risen this year. They're like being the elite guys are going in the first couple rounds. Yes. So I, I was diving into the data and I was like, I, I wanted to see it, it, the reason why some of, they were so successful last year, these guys, because they were going later, they were going in like the fifth, sixth round, a lot of them. So it wasn't as much due to those players as it was like you were able to get all these other elite players and then snag these high performing quarterbacks. So that had played into part of it as well. But what I was looking at was, okay, let me look at the guys who made the championship round and see what was, what was the, the earliest in general that they took a quarterback. And so I noticed you waited here to the 12th to grab your first quarterback. So I looked last year. It's like, well, how many of, of those players, of those teams that made it to the championship round, how many were there? So it looked like, like only like 8% of the teams like waited that long. To, to, to hold off on their quarterback until um, the 12th round or later, their first quarterback. But only – and I had, I had looked this up, so I, I did it again right before I came on. Only 15% of the teams that waited till the, the 12th round or later, um, only 15% of them made it to the championships, which oh, is man. less – the average is, is 20% oh, of no. teams make it to the championship round. So that's something to keep in mind. So if you're holding off, <laughs> no, no. It, I mean, still 50%. It's not like you're, you're done, but it. I'm logging off. I it's suboptimal <laughs> based on last year, but maybe yeah. this will be better. I don't know. I Super curious. decision to wait until 10 o'clock to bring right. Darren on. Yeah, Super where, decision <laughs> by all involved. This? I was just, just bragging about how much I love my draft. <laughs> it's a big setup. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bait and switch. <laughs> just just wait until now. the draft is over. But I do like Geno Smith, so that's good. I mean, I've been dra drafting him in quite a few of my drafts as well. He's probably undervalued. What does your um, data say about Geno Smith? Because I think he's an exception. This is the yeah, he could be the outlier. I, I didn't just dig into like, well, okay, now let me look, <laughs> go next level and see how many of those were Geno Smith. Maybe it goes Speaking of last year, I'm sure we were all talking about Geno Smith last year at this time, just like he was never being drafted at all in anything right. and I'm like well he's good you know I got you got to love that offense yeah he wasn't even picked pretty much wasn't he even was, picked. He was a free agent was he if you know was he somebody who on waivers mattered a lot like I know with uh 
our friends who won the main event two years ago, they picked up Burrow on waivers. You might not know this, but do you have any sort of memory of whether Geno Smith mattered last year in this tournament? Um, I think, yeah. Well, it, it, I guess I'd have to look up and see, you know, look at the advance rates, how many teams. Right. Um, you, you know what else, Darren? Like, most of his big weeks were early. So maybe, like, it was too late or just, you know, you might have had – of course, a team could have had one of the elite quarterbacks already and had no use for him. I don't know. Like, There's a lot of other extenuating factors in that. but Yeah, maybe his best yeah. weeks were behind him because he was he was the majority of, of his shares were picked up from the waiver wire because very few teams even drafted right. him. Right, right. Um, but I don't know. And it would have been early, but he's somebody – like he was not a hot rookie, somebody that still took time to sort of process and believe in, you know. Like he had that – Two, three, four. He had big games, but even maybe if you had picked him up, you still were like, oh, I don't know. Yeah, you, you're still that. hesitant. Like it takes a it takes a while for people to buy into it. Like like last year, even with Devonta Smith, like he was a guy. Like I missed out on a couple of his weeks because, you know, it, it, it I, you know, it, he wasn't a slam dunk right away. It took like a few. It takes a few weeks for you to like to gain that confidence, and that goes with a lot of players. Um, right. So. But I don't know about the Geno Smith, but uh, yeah. But it looks how like many? The, sorry, Darren. I was going to ask you how many drafts have you done? I haven't done. And I've got the hard way draft this Thursday. Oh, that's a football guys or yeah. fantasy pros. I'm sorry, see, it's taking taking mm-hmm. a while. But I've got like I, I've been really hitting hard the uh, the super flex tourney. So I probably mm-hmm. did about twenty of those. And this is the thing. People are, are so much state is out there. So people are getting smarter. You got to go in different areas to like where are the edges, where are the edges still exist. So I'm hitting, I've been hitting the super flex tourney because there's less, you know, data and, and, and hype out about that. Everybody's pouring into the, the standard best ball tournaments. So I'm trying to like, you know, go into some other areas, um, cool. at least for now. Yeah, um, no, no. yeah, that makes sense. And plus, the the best ball tourney is always fun. There's a nice. What's what's the grand prize for that, Darren? That one is fifty thousand. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's, that's nice. The change, yeah. Yeah, and then I'll hit the 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 uh, the 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 standard best ball one, the two hundred k one, probably a little bit later on, um, before I start jumping in those. But so, Adam, you're just drafting in this one, and Mike's drafting in the ten o'clock. Yes, so we're okay, actually, correct. yeah, which is in a couple of minutes. We're, I, I mean, I'm just queuing up some guys. It's here. going to end. It's going to it's end. Going before, to end before ten, which is sweet, which is awesome. Yeah, I was wondering. Yeah. It seemed like he got off to a quick start, but, uh, but you know, some more of the teams here that I look, I, I took a look. So team three, it looks like they went, they they grabbed the low hanging fruit of the Kelsey Mahomes stack right off the bat, yeah. and got the week seventeen correlation with T Higgins. Um. Mike, I think I think Team Three is in is in your draft as well. Just an FYI. Yeah, Prison Mike. Yeah, that's correct. Mm-hmm. Pr- Pr- Prison Mike. Yeah, I'm not sure uh, what slot. You like it, Darren? Were you saying? Do you like it or no? What are you thinking? Um, he, well, that's basically he did like a zero RB, so it's 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 hard to to knock the Kelsey Mahomes uh, <laughs> combination. It's it's like it is, by, it's. It's like buying a IBM stock like in the old days. Like you can't go wrong. Um, but then he hit the, the running backs later. And then I noticed, I guess with Leone, that the teams 10 and 11, mm-hmm. there was some sniping of quarterbacks. So team 10 had A.J. Brown, but team 9 took Jalen Hurts. Leone had Diggs, and then team 10 took his Josh Allen. Uh so, told us he was ready to, to take Allen. Like he was sort of hoping for that. Yeah, it would have been late, but he was hoping for that. Didn't happen. Didn't. <laughs> didn't happen. Didn't happen. And that's the other thing. Like a draft like this, if you publicize it, you're going to get better players in there too, as yeah. opposed to just hitting. You know, you can do the the, the four o'clock uh, Sunday afternoon is probably going to be a little lighter for you. At the Sizzler. At the Sizzler, the Sizzler guys. They they'll all they'll all. All chip in and buy a team. Can you imagine walking into a Sizzler or like a Shoney's and you walk in and there's like 10 gray haired guys like me or 12 gray haired guys like me sitting at a big booth, all with laptops drafting a fantasy pros championship right. team? Would all that be amazing? 
Yeah. I would pay more. I'd pay double the entry just to see that. It's community effort. You got to love it. <laughs> I draft a quarterback in the first round just to see that. Yeah, back in the old days. That's before we knew what we were doing. I, I, you well, see that gonna, a lot in the main event quarterbacks in the in the first round. Listen, we're getting back these underdog drafts. They're tickling the freaking first round with some of these quarterbacks. <laughs> it's well, it's it's getting up there. I noticed in uh, you guys didn't see this, but in the seven o'clock fantasy pros draft, Austin Eckler went one hundred one. Wow! Really? Yeah. Wow. Wow. So maybe some drinking going on today. I don't know. That's but, what I said. This is the time. I mean. That's outrageous, but <laughs> it's possible. Eckler at 101. How are you on Eckler, Darren? You, you got to think he, he's. it would be tough to repeat what he did, but he's he's a solid first-round pick. But then even when you see something crazy like that, I mean, if they smash, like it's not going to matter if he did a 101 or, you know, it, it comes down to having the right players at the end, right? So – if you you know when you look back on it, like how much did it hurt you? The guy still got you to the, the championship round. Like there, you need those players that are going to smash week sixteen and seventeen. So and how you got them, it just sort of becomes secondary at the end of the day. Yes. Um, well, you know that's that's right. Everybody is kind of like not obsessed, but interested in closing line value these days, like average draft position. Now, which way is it going shows completely devoted, which I consume them, you know, fully. So I'm not saying anything negative about them, but to where is the, what is the ADP now? And then where will it be labor day? And like, I don't know, Eckler, I'm not sure Eckler has moved at all since the contract thing. They could still sign somebody. I don't know how it gets better in terms of that for Eckler, but love the player. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and and no, you're you're right, Mike, with all the closing line values and all this stuff. And I just, I can I just, I just want to talk about the team upgrading the left hand side of their offensive line. I want to talk about the left tackle that they had. I want to talk <laughs> about they they changed their run scheme. It's a zone scheme as far as, and we're talking about closing <laughs> line values. <laughs> it just it makes me sick. Makes you want to talk about the juke move and like yes. whether they should, yes. you know, the, did, did the did the quarterback when he threw the pass have his fingers on the laces or what was happening there? <laughs> that's what I want. My to draft is starting in twenty seconds. Yeah. Uh, so can can I draft. sort of yeah. look over there while you guys talk for a minute? I want, I'm at one oh four and well, I'm sharing. No, I, I'm, I sharing don't the a, I'm sharing it right now, so we're live. We're live. I you have it. Yeah. Oh yeah, I pulled it up. I'm co-owners with you. That's why you didn't get the 101. That's why you, got the oh, oh, you got Theo at two here. We'll see what That's Theo right. does. We, Theo at two. He'll be on later. She, she, Theo's in the green room. We'll bring him in after after his pick. All right. The prison Mike's down to 10 this time, so you won't have to worry about him. We'll see if he does all that zero RB. He's more likely to do zero RB out of the 10. That was was weird sure. about your draft, Adam. Like the, the first three teams like really pounded the receivers hard. Only two running backs taken by those three teams in uh, – combined in the first six rounds but then you also had five running backs in the first round which you could probably tell that, that that's pretty rare right to get or even at the first 13 picks you had Brees hall pick 13 like yeah that's early that's pretty rare my draft is on pause because one person isn't there oh, no. adam would you please run through your final roster if we're done are you done oh uh, yes uh let me pull up my board again here um Go ahead and do that if you can, and then we'll get to mine. Yep. We have two hours. We'll get to mine. <laughs> Share this tab instead. All right. So and I'm just gonna let it auto pick my my last pick because I have guys queued up. Um, all right. So I went pick. I went one on one with Jefferson because of course. Uh, two three turn went Ramondre Stevenson, Mark Andrews, uh, rounds four through seven. Jerry Judy, Chris Godwin, Kadarius Tony, Traylon Burks. Um, then I had to get back to running back. Devin A chain, uh, Brian Robinson back to back. Uh, Bateman, I can't, I can't quit Bateman, so I'm going to take him every time in the tenth round. Um, back to Tank Bigsby, the the, the riser here. Um, some question marks, but hey, maybe he'll get a a bunch of the carries there in Jacksonville. Third third round running back. Uh, finally got to quarterback Geno Smith and Kirk Cousins. Two out of my next three picks, sandwich in Chuba Hubbard. Um, Gerald Everett, uh, almost two rounds past ADP. Another guy I can't quit in Hunter Renfro, who I think is super talented. Sean Tucker, who might be the best uh, running back on the team. 
uh, New Orleans defense, Jason Sanders as my kicker. And uh, and let's go, let's go, Isaiah Hodgins for that. Uh oh, Isaiah, former yeah. Buffalo. You were Buffalo. doing so well. We were doing so well. <laughs> Wide receiver, what is he? Wide receiver nine, Isaiah Hodgins. So we'll do. Aaron, do you have a favorite? Tucker? You think Tucker's going to make the team? I think if his heart, if he hears heart protocol or whatever, I think he's, uh, I think he would have been a second or third round pick. So, uh, I think he's either going to be cut because he can't cut it physically, which would stink, or I think he's going to have a shot at being the starter there. So I, I really, I really like that. I think at this Aaron, point, and we'll know more by you know by yeah, August. it's worth a shot. Like you get, you're going to have two waiver runs anyway before the right. season starts, so you'll know. Right, Darren, do you have a favorite Giants receiver? Not Waller. Did uh, they kind of all blend together? Um. Hyatt? No. That's Slayton. What about uh, Wandale? Yeah, probably Wandale. But he's coming off an injury, isn't he? Yes. I think he is. But still, I mean, that'd probably be the guy. I I mean, not not that you're, like, targeting that situation, but – and it's it's been that same way for past three, four years. It's just a rotating – committee of, of guys and somebody gets hot for two, three weeks and then they disappear. Then somebody else picks it up. So it, it's hard to, uh, you know, to it's rude of me to ask you about the, it's rude of me to ask you about the giants here on a holiday weekend. We've invited you on You're an Eagles guy. I would say Paris Campbell for me, but uh, I wasn't thinking when I brought up the giants for you, it already had come up and it was rude of me to do that. So you just take shots. To, I mean, especially in best ball, just, you know, get Mike. shares to spread it around. There's Mike a good 23 round picks. He can't quit Paris Campbell, but uh, I guess it's my turn to, to take over here. So let's bring the OG, Theo G, Theo Greminger onto the podcast tonight, folks. There he is, the man, the myth, the legend, drafting on vacation. Welcome, sir. Yeah, oh. you can tell, Adam, this is like, this is, uh, I'm actually, shout out to Bethesda, Maryland. I'm at my parents' house. We're <laughs> taking a little family trip. So. Hopefully I don't wake everybody up, but um, it's good to be here. I-, I love the fact you guys are doing this. Uh, I appreciate Mike for hooking me up with the 102. That was uh, Mike show. Yes. yes. He sent a message to the FFPC. I requested the 102 so I could get Jamar Chase, and, and Mike delivered. I really appreciate it, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> I've got, got the 102 Thursday night, I, Theo. I'll be watching you here. I know. you got to defend. you got to defend your title, uh, Darren. I do. You're going uh, to set the template here. There you go. There you go. I uh I got it two years ago. Darren got it last year. So we we have a big one uh this Thursday night, the hard way draft. Um it's a lot of fun. A lot of a lot of our friends are doing it. Um, a lot of trash talk. So this is a good one. This is this is a sharp one tonight. That'll be a really hard one. So I usually try to hold off until June first. Um, so now I'm I'm in here. I'm in here. This is just oh, I serve at the pleasure of the president. So you're welcome and I wish you well tonight. <laughs> Appreciate that, guys. Do you guys play for money in the hard ways? Yes. So it's no. like a you pay the entry fee. It's the same. Or, it's a it's a you know a three fifty um a fantasy pros players championship this year. No more football, guys. I almost I, there, I say it like once a week, but it's fantasy pros. Is there a belt or anything? Like what what is the actual? What do you take away from it other than like it's just breaking rights? Well, you get to if you're Darren, you get to put you get to put your your winning roster on the on the front page of Fantasy Mojo. Yeah, so I guess, hey, I you're guess beating, to, you're beating to, like eleven of the toughest players. You know, yeah, it's 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 yeah. a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun for sure. Now, back in the day, the hard way was like the is that like the in, the first draft kind of the first tough draft of the year type of deal, like setting the setting the ADP. Is is that what that was supposed to be? So we think it's hard way. We do a hard way best ball, like right around the Super Bowl, where I think we're the first best ball draft. Okay. Where and that one has a slightly different group of drafters, um, but that one's still super hard. It's a regular twenty eight rounder. Um, so I guess that one, I guess, is kind of like because there's no real ADP at that point. That one kind of sets it. But they start so much earlier um, these days that there's so many drafts already that ADPs kind of established and and I guess Darren would talk about this more. I mean, like ADP a lot of it stays exactly the same as we're going to draft in 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 like, you know, those early September drafts, like especially like at, towards the top. So, um 
I guess it it really I think it really hardens you, Adam. I don't know how many you're doing, like for your June um three fifties. I mean, how many are you going to enter? This is my fourth, I think. So I I usually like to do honestly, like in this tournament, I like to do like one a week. It keeps yeah. me sharp. It keeps me sharp for the like the um the the bigger events later on. Like I could start later, but. I don't know. I just don't get that. I don't, I don't get the juice flowing unless it's a three fifty or more. I know that sounds terrible, but it's, like I'd probably have to sit down and do, you know, 25 underdogs to get the same, you know, juice that I get for this. So yeah, I'll probably do one a week just to stay sharp uh, until the big events come late, uh, late August. Underdogs, just like muscle memory. It's like you jump in a bunch of slow ones and you have a bunch of drafts going. That's kind of, kind of what I'm, I'm doing with it now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm with you, but I like to, I usually like to chop it up. Um, some NFFC 350s with the uh, FFPC ones, but I don't know. I've gotten more and more um, FFPC because, I mean, I have so much Dynasty uh, skin in the game. I'm always on the site. It's really tempting to just hop in these, in these uh, you know, Players' Championships drafts. So I'm, I'm kind of with you. Um, I love doing them, but at the end of the day, you end up with so many 350s that you have to do waivers for, um, and that's a, that's a big challenge. You have to manage them. And yeah. the, it, one of the things... So people who aren't familiar with this tournament, they should go to my site and look at the primer. But if you look at the, 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 I do analysis that go deeper. And here's one of the things I was looking at this again today. One thing that people always want to know is when's the best time for me to draft in this tournament? Well, it doesn't matter when you draft two or three teams from every league are going to the, the championship round. But I, then I looked at, Okay, let's look at the top 10%, but the, the, the guys who hit the money, right? Because you got to finish like in the top, last year it was a top 200. This year it's down to 600, but you got to finish in like the top 600 of that, that the, the, the championship round to actually get a cash prize. So I looked at those teams that were in the top 600, and then I mapped them back. When do these guys draft? The lowest percentage of those were the May, the May teams. And the, the higher percentage were uh, June was really good, but July is dropped off. And then August, September is really good. So, but, but it's, this is three years in a row now that the May teams have a low, um, you know, success rate relative to the other ones. And I think the reason is not because, it, it, you know, the draft rooms are different. I think it's because of the quality of players that are in drafting in May. You got yeah. all the sharks out there. So yeah. these leagues are tight. And then you got to fight with these guys through the whole year as well. It's not just your draft. Whereas if you hop in these drafts in August, September, you get some people who aren't as yeah. seasoned, right? And then you can not only do you beat them at the draft, you beat them during the season too. So I think it's a little, I mean, the edge is like you're just looking for every little edge you can find in these tournaments. And that's mm -hmm. one thing that I noticed, but that, that I got the whole breakdown of it um, over there as well. So it, that's some, and then it's so good, Darren. It's so good. It's so useful and interesting. It's great. And I think just this as a, as a side note, this is the last thing I'll say about this. One of the reasons like Chad Schrader is so good. Like he doesn't even, he, that's when he jumps in, he jumps in like at the end of August and all his drafts are like kind of intersect with when things are generally softer. So not only is he a good player, but he's uh, he's optimally playing all of his drafts like right at that peak time as well. He's very disciplined, you know. Yeah. Like Chad will kind of sit back and then pounce, and he'll be able to kind of like gauge kind of the guys who have steamed up, um, and like the guys that make sense to him and the guys that don't. Um, he's really, really a fascinating guy to talk to. Yeah, just to have the the be able to not draft until August. Like, I don't even know what that even is. Like, what is that? Like, I haven't, I haven't not drafted till August since I was like in like high school. So the, just to be, it's able a to way, it's a way tougher world, right? Like there are, there are more tournaments and more oh, everything, yeah. more sites, but man, like, I don't know, like I'm still relatively new to this, but what is the, like you're talking about the quality of the players and the sharks and everything like that. What is it right now versus three years ago? I mean, is it not way different? It's, it's really hard, especially the best ball. Like I've been playing best ball since like 2003 out in world championship of fantasy football in Vegas. I was doing best ball leagues. They called them draft masters, but the, the kids these days, they're so freaking sharp. Like they're, they're light years ahead of, 
Like I can barely remember like the week 17 correlations. And these guys are just, they're machines. Hmm. Like how do you do 15 drafts in a day? It's like, that's like a different world to me. Like I don't have the time to do that, but it's just the players are getting better as, as, as time goes on as well. Adam, I'm, I'm OTC here. And um, I see you. You're two away. I'll tell you that I'm, I'm, be, I'm between Tony Pollard, Ramondre Stevenson, or building a little correlation with Jalen Hurts. It's a, it's a good pick. I feel like being in this early third is good. Yeah, very nice. I, so for the record, I drafted at eight thirty. Mike is Mike is drafting tonight. Oh, okay, right. Mike. Well, that's that's who I'm looking at. Is Mike? Um, I'll be I watching. I'm gonna go with I'm going with I'm going with the running back here, Mike. I'm gonna pass on the QB and I'm gonna pass on Mondre. I'm gonna go with Tony Pollard here. Who I'm very bullish on. ADP like is 18. It. Yeah. Jameer Gibbs there at the uh at the wow. 301. Steam, That's steaming early. up. Plus the two tight end team between us. Okay. This yeah, will be an two, interesting one. The two tight end teams pretty pretty incredible. Let me run yeah, off. You see that too often. Some of these picks here. So turf, he's more like the tight end burglar is what he is at the at the one hundred three oh. with Kelsey and Hawkinson and Mahomes. Now I, I want to see he or she come back around and just pound every running back receiver for the next fifteen rounds. But um, so yeah, no, nothing. Uh, Tyreek fell a little bit. Went to the one hundred six cup one hundred seven. That's a beautiful pick. Um, Diggs one hundred eight. That fell by Bijan, C.D. Lamb. I'm on Ross St. Brown, who's been creeping up. And Saquon Barkley to finish the first round. Um, AJ Brown, Garrett Wilson, Jonathan Taylor, Devontae Adams to start the second round. Uh, Chubb, Steam up to RB6 uh, at pick five of the second round. Jalen Waddle, Mark Andrews, Josh Jacobs, Chris Alave to Mike. Thank at, you. At, at, what, what, what was that tone, by the way? I, like, love, oh. I love Chris Alave. No, Chris that's a great. Alave. I, I had him queued up pre-draft. I tried to like map this out, and Alave would have been an auto pick for me uh, at the the two eleven. I like him. I, I think I might take him ahead of Devonta Smith. I know it's like hard to pass yeah. on Devonta Smith with you know ninety six catches, and he's a fantastic player. I just think Alave could be like the the guy who blows up this year. Yeah, I'm surprised Smith lasted that long for you. That was unusual. Nice. It's uh, funny though, Mike. You don't find anyone negative on Chris Olave, which is weird. You know, it's like universal love for Chris Olave. And Darren, you've seen that a million times. Where sometimes the the guys who get really steamed and everyone loves them, it doesn't always work out. Yeah, you get the rug pulled out from under you if if if, if that you know. So in, in those cases, you're better off if well, it's it's a double edged sword. Like you could fade him if you think he's too steamed up. You just fade him, but then you don't have any you know shares of the guy either kind of yeah. like kelsey kelsey's sort of like that too people keep thinking he's gonna drop off he's gonna drop off we've been saying it for four years now this is the year everybody seems to be all in on him and he's he's going right you know top four well now if this is the year he falls off then you know you gotta watch <laughs> out darren what are I, you- I just want to say i agree with that that uh position on alave like it is it is he was right like nobody is off him it seems like he's one of these guys that everybody loves youth you know the way he how efficient he was and how he produced on a limited team i happen to like Carr a lot so i can see it really booming and i don't know about michael thomas or what the running back thing is i think there's like a you know like you said everybody's sort of in but um i'm definitely in and it was Alave or smith because i don't want to start without a, run, a wide receiver in the first two rounds they, you know, Carr has been fantastic for for pushing uh, up, you know, one of his his main targets. Like, you know, you you had Devonte Adams last year, Hunter Renfro the year before as a wide receiver one, and then Waller's uh, top three tight end for two years in a row. So, like, that's one thing you know Carr has not done is is held back, you know, his top target. So I think that you know wheels up for sure. Um... Yeah, Carr, Carr is another guy that could he, he can just get the ball to the guys that need to get the ball, uh, which is what we want in fantasy. Um, Darren, tell me, talk about um, elite tight end build one two. I know every year you always post on it, but for people who don't know, like it, it's usually historically been an, it, it looks kind of sexy, but historically it, it has not been a big money maker. Correct, going tight end, tight end. In uh, not in um, redraft, 
it's it's it usually yet. pretty good in best ball. Okay. But in redraft, you don't see a lot of uh, double tight end teams. I th- I, somebody finished yeah, – I think it was a best ball. But somebody did a, 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 a double tight end and finished top five last year, I think. But that was the best ball tourney. But you don't usually see that um, in in redraft. It, it's not it's not been successful. And you, you see less of it as well. Um, and as far as Olave goes, I think right there's a tear break – in receiver, like once you get past Waddle, then it's they they kind it's like Alave, Smith, Higgins, Metcalf, like all those guys could sort of go, you know. They're, they're, I think they're interchangeable. Um, yeah, Metcalf's been going at the two three turn a lot. I've been I've, I've been seeing. Um, so yeah, after so what was it uh, Alave, then Hawkinson, Turf Burglar, Devonta Smith, Brees Hall to end out round one. Theo talked a little bit about Devonta Smith. And Pollard, um, Jameer Gibbs. So Brees Hall goes at the 212 here, went in the 201, the last draft that I just did. Then Jameer Gibbs at the 301, he steamed up around, uh, around and a half from uh, around. I think he went to the uh, Mike Leone in the last draft at the end of that third round. So, um, followed by Tony Pollard, Theo, Patrick Mahomes, uh, T Higgins, Najee Harris, Derek Henry, Jalen Hurts, Ramondra Stevenson. DK Metcalf, George Kittle, Amari Cooper, Josh Allen to round out the third round. Uh, Mike T. Higgins at the three hundred four. Are you uh, are you in on Higgins this year? I mean, ADP is about right. Yep. I certainly. I mean, I'm, I'm at worst neutral on him, but I love the Bengals. I'm just trying to like value has been tough here. I want to hear Theo after this turn comes back around. Like there has maybe Theo's done better than anybody else in this draft at getting ADP value. Um, I just sort of, I feel like I want to start a certain way and I've kind of been forced when you start with a running back in the first round, like McCaffrey, you're like, okay. I mean, that's potentially a home run, but I, I would have taken Kelsey or anybody else picked in front of me instead. And then I do feel a little bit under pressure already by round two. Um, you know, in the underdog world, it's a great spot because you're you're starting receiver and then two running backs because Kelsey's value is different and the running backs are great there, but this is kind of inside out. So um, I feel a little bit under the gun here and trying try to make sure I build the team I want. Yeah, no, I, and I think a lot of pe- people, um, you're talking more about the build, which is, I think, fine. I think it's great. I think you're going at it correctly. T. Higgins, the, the, the player, I, I've heard a couple of, People kind of down on on Higgins. Um, I think Dwayne Dwayne McFarland might be one of them. Um, and so to see him, you know, people. I usually like Higgins. He's like a safe pick as far as like per game basis. I know some fluke things happened to him, especially last year, losing that Bills game, Week Seventeen, and then also the game he was supposed to play. It was a prime time game, and he played one snap, and then kind of screwed people there. Uh, but I think he's just a sit like when he plays, he's safe. He's a thousand, he's 75 catches for a thousand yards and eight touchdowns. You know, he doesn't have maybe the upside of a DK Metcalf or a Devonta Smith, but I feel he's a safe pick there in the mid third. He just, he just is sort of capped by his target ceiling. Yeah. Like if he ever has that one year where his targets get like to the 150 range, then he could be the league winner. But he just, he just never seems to hit that mark and and chase is just so targeted uh you know every time he's out on the field so it's i don't know you can make a bull argument because i feel like tyler boyd is on a decline um and then they they have a new tight end with herb smith joe mixon's getting a little bit older they lose p ryan so you could make a bull case that this is the year that higgins sees a ton of targets and also they're going to pay him so uh there's a few things to really like there Higgins had four games last year with 20 or more points. Two of those were when Chase was out because Chase, Chase actually killed a lot of teams last year because he was out Yeah, for a good part of the middle of the season. Yeah, I completely agree. There were a lot of, you know, this is a kind of a macro look. There were a lot of players that ruined. I mean, I think at one point last year I counted like 19 of the first uh, 19 players in the first five rounds that were drafted based on ADP missed like four or more games. And this was like week 13. Uh, so, I mean, there were so many injuries last year, but yeah, he was, he was one of the brutal ones, but yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a good point that two of Higgins 
games over 20 points were weeks where Higgins was, uh, I'm sorry, where um, Jamar Chase was, was hurt. So, um, so yeah, um, Najee here. I think we get to the end of the third round. Uh, 401, Debo Samuel, Aaron Jones at RB14 at the 402. Uh, Joe Burrow, Kelvin Ridley, Keenan Allen, uh, Travis Etienne, who's falling a bit, Lamar Jackson, who I love, Joe Mixon, Kyle Pitts to to the deep end two, um, Drake London. Is that two? Goddard. Isn't there two on there? The deep end two. Yeah, That's but you know, come on. It's condescending. The deep end dose. Sorry. Um, Dallas Goddard and DeAndre Hopkins. So you guys both went tight ends here. Uh, Mike, talk to me about. Kyle Pitts as the tight end five late fourth. Round. I don't have to tell you anything about Kyle Pitts that you don't know already, but deal. I mean, ADP was like 40. Yeah. And I, don't know, I thought Theo might want one or team one, a little bit of tight end pressure down here with what team three did. And so the value was there and nobody else was screaming. Kenneth Walker is the best, I think, was the best ADP value at that time. And I think good job for team one to do that. But uh, I feel like. Pitts is almost somebody I had to pick. Yeah, I, I would have taken Pitts. I was hoping he was going to fall to me. And I kind of reacted a little bit to that with my Goddard selection, which I don't like taking Goddard there, but I feel like it's a it's a little bit of a tear break after Goddard. Um, so mm -hmm. I forced it, and I have a little Philadelphia correlation with him and Smith. And then DJ Moore, I mean, I could have gone a number of ways there. I considered Dobbins, and I considered Christian Watson. Um, but ultimately, I went I went with DJ Moore. I, I feel pretty comfortable with him as a wide receiver three. Um, having him in the flex, I, I feel like he'll have some spike games in Chicago. I think he's a little bit beat up um, in terms of like the ADP, not so much. But I think there's a lot of people kind of poking holes in the situation. But I don't know. He could be rejuvenated, and I think they could feature him. Yeah, I, I completely agree. You got the whole um, Jalen Hurts – you know, Philly, like, look, he, he took a step forward and look at all what happened to all the Philly receivers there. Like, if we can get just some step forward um, in fields there, DJ Moore could have, a, as far as passing efficiency, DJ Moore could have a monster season um, for sure. So, yeah, I mean, tight end, go and get your guy. You guys both, you know, for Mike to be able to get Kyle Pitts there, that's why he loves pick four because, you know, you're able to kind of get the last of maybe that tier – or some would consider I probably consider Goddard right now in the same tier as Pitts, Pitts with the higher, higher ceiling, but to be able to get a tight end there. Cause after this, you know, as you can see here, we're going to go around without another, without a tight end being taken. So uh, tight end is, is just tough on the ends. Yes. It's yeah. just tough to get what you want, but how about team five starting five running backs? Wow. Yeah, I was just looking Darren, at that. Is, is Denny's open like tonight? Is there going to be, that's a, definitely, a, that's that's maybe Golden Corral there. <laughs> <The> Big <laughs> time Golden Corral. <laughs> so here's so I, I just looked it up last year in football guys. It was football guys last year. Twenty two teams started their draft with five RBs. Only one of them made it to the championship round. So that's a very low. That's that's what four percent. It's a very uh, poor. No, 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 not one of them is a good deal. <laughs> like it wasn't a draft where anybody sort of fell like Eckler's early Jacobs. They're all early. Maybe not That's Harris, good. but they're, I think they're all early. Yeah. It's getting your guys gone too far. I think on that one, it's late. Yeah. It's late. anything can work. Anything uh, can work. Sandy breeze. Just a Sandy breezy day. Uh, Walker, the 501 DJ Moore, Christian Watson, Jerry, Judy. We talked about Judy earlier. Mike and I are both very high on him. Um, and look, hero RB Christian McCaffrey. Is that, uh, are you, are you comfy with that, Mike? Yeah. It's the best thing about it. Like I would rather have a different start, but it's McCaffrey and you know, like it's the best thing about it is, is the player that he is not everything yeah. there is perfect. I mean, age, other, other players on the team, but it's Christian McCaffrey. You, you figure the rest out. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's, there's an argument to be made that, when you get a chance at like a McCaffrey, that's when you want to force the the hero RB because it gives you a running back and a half. So you might as well really, really force it. Complete, yeah, yeah can completely agree. Um, Delvin Cook, J.K. Dobbins, Miles Sanders, Chris Godwin, Rashad White moving up the board. 
uh, Terry McLaurin, Deontay Johnson, Christian Kirk to round out round five. I see Deontay Johnson slowly moving up here. Darren, I'm going to go look at your – do I have it pulled up? ADP. Where is Deontay Johnson? He's usually round six, late late round six. So um, yet people are finally realizing that they're making a mistake on passing him in their fifth or sixth round, um, taking him at the 5'11". Um, and then starting round six is Darren Waller, James Conner moving up the board, Marquise Brown, Trevor Lawrence, Cam Akers, Michael Pittman, Jordan Addison, Justin Herbert, Justin Fields. Mike got his elite quarterback, hopefully elite tight end build. That's how you got to do these uh, here RB builds, right? No offense, DL. I mean, yeah, you saw nice. Fields coming with uh, DJ Moore sitting there. I know. I would have loved that. I had him. I had him very much at the top of the queue, but I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna continue to uh, to get some some Philadelphia Eagles exposure, and I'm gonna add a third Eagle with DeAndre Swift here as RB two. There you go. Yeah, I would have loved that Fields. That would have been great value for Fields, too. Do you have remorse now of not taking Hurts in the third? Yeah, I mean, I would have. Yeah, I, I, I absolutely do. I it wouldn't do really have been Pollard, a reach. Though. Like, like Pollard, though, would have been. I mean, I would have taken Pollard. I would have considered Pollard in the second round. I think he could be headed there. So, like, getting getting Pollard there gives me a little bit of a, you know, it it gave me an option of going here or RB two to take him there in the third round and just kind of, but I like Swift there. So yeah, I mean, in retrospect, putting, putting Hertz out there with Goddard and Smith, I would like that a lot. Um, but what are you going to do? I would say I like your team more this way. Yeah. Uh, be, because Pollard was good value. And I think you'll probably, we'll see what happens, but you'll probably be happy at quarterback anyway. You certainly have more outs. But to have those turbocharged, you know, Philadelphia Eagles uh, stacks, I mean, that's pretty good. Yeah, right. I had a, a Uke in the queue there, too. I didn't like that pick. <laughs> Me, too. Me, too. So I wasn't getting him? No, you definitely Receiver, weren't. I, I, I love Ayuk in this range. Receivers, so we're through six rounds, right? Um, yes. 32, according to Baron's website, 32 receivers through six rounds is the same number. Feels like it's been heavy, but I guess not, ultimately. Uh, man, Jordan Edison moving up to the mid six. So these these rookies, I think the people still Theo, do people still have dynasty fever here? Oh, so you probably have nine o'clock here. <laughs> I'm, like I'm I'm in I'm in the hole here. I mean, Addison is Addison's a stud. I yeah, mean, I I target Addison. competition, but he's a stud. And we had four wide receivers selected in the first round, and people are just like, whatever, this is not the year that they're gonna have guys um contributing early. And I'm like, I don't know, man. It's uh I think this class is pretty good. Yeah, and Jordan Addison is a very, very talented player. This yes. is a pick he here. Talented, undersized a little bit, but I agree, he's very talented. He gets to, he gets to just be all by himself you know, over there um, across from Justin Jefferson and Hawkinson taking up uh, guys too. So I think he could he, he could do really really well there in the Adam Thielen role. Um, so that'll be that'll be interesting to see how he can do because he really he really moved up there in. Uh, in, in ADP for sure. Even James Conner, another guy that really moved up RB. Yes. 22. There's Burks. Love it. Yeah. I like Burks a lot there. I w I still would have preferred Ayuk to Burks, but I think Burks is, is very solid there. Took him in the last draft uh, for, for sure. Are you, so I know Theo, are you uh subscribed to like the hey, second year breakout receiver type deal? Is that, I know you're big on the rookie receivers too. Just in second general. second year breakout wide receiver has been like a cheat code in fantasy yeah. for years. Last year, last year it it hit again. Jalen <laughs> Waddle crushed his ADP. Devonta Smith crushed his ADP. Um, Amon Ross St. Brown with a points per game basis, um, you know, crushed his ADP. But it did really burn people um, in this range because this was the range people were pushing up Tony and people were pushing up Elijah Moore into that sixth round, um, you know, you saw a lot of really, really sharp people that we respect that were auto-picking Tony. Um, they got really burned on that one. And then the Elijah Moore one, that one hurt a lot. I I, I drafted a, a good amount of Elijah Moore. So we do see those second-year guys fail in this range. But, I mean, Burks right now, I mean, Adam, make, you can't really make a case against him getting targets this year. Like, they have nothing there. And he's the first-round pick of theirs. And 
he was basically their AJ AJ Brown replacement. So um, I think that they have there's a lot like riding on on him being decent for them this year. So I don't know here at this range he can just be a high end wide receiver three, but I think he's got range where he could be like a mid wide receiver two if it all hits. Yeah, speaking of three, I mean Darren oh. talking about Dalton Kincaid is tight end three for team three, the turf burglars. What what's oh. the, what's the deal? Think, it's a weird Theo, pick. Cheer, cheers to you for having a tight end already at this point after what's happening between us. <laughs> That's yeah, right. there you go. There you go. I mean, Mike, I'm I i do not think Dalton Kincaid would have been in your queue to take right there. I I can see no. the Pierce. No. Go I'm high on no. Kincaid, but this is getting a little steamy. Does, uh, Turf, does Turf Burgers have a star next to his name? But if you look at the owners list, let me see. Let me check look it at, out. Look at Sandy Breeze and Turf Burglars. <laughs> we thank them for their service, Darren. Uh, Your money's always good here. Turf Burglar does, does not. Turf Burglar does Brownish. not. Sandy Breeze does. Okay. Hey, tight tight end premium. I mean, <laughs> anything, anything could work. I mean, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Tight end premium. Tight end premium. Pacheco is the RB1. Kincaid has to start. Every, I mean, a rookie tight end. I like, I've got, I'm willing to reach for Kincaid, but not when he's my tight end three. In that what game. do you do with him on your team as a rookie in this situation? I mean, is he sitting on your bench the first six weeks? No. I mean, you basically need him to go nuclear um, right away to have him like flex him in, on this team. But I don't know. It's odd. Right away. Yeah. Right away. Yeah. Yeah. So we will, we, we will yeah, see. Pacheco's got some question marks. I mean, Pierce might have been. I like you got a good deal on part on Pierce. Yeah. Sure. I, I like him a lot. Offense can't be worse. I don't think. There's real competition for him. Singletary is cheap, and Pierce, I think, sort of probably outranks him there. And I think he's good if anybody cares about that anymore. So, yeah, I, I'm happy to draft Pierce. Adam and I have been talking about him a lot this offseason. I think he is uh, fine at ADP, and this was a round later. Yeah, a full round later on that. Yep. Um, okay, so Swift to Theo, and then Brandon Ayuk to end the sixth round. Montgomery to start the seventh, followed by Traylon Burks, Dalton Kincaid, Damian Pierce, Mike Williams, Jackson Smith and Jigba, Pat Fryermuth, Alexander Madison, Javante Williams, Antonio Gibson, Kadarius Tony, and Gabe Davis to round out the seventh round. Interesting again, like I'm a Madison guy. I just feel like there isn't a ton of value in the seventh round. But maybe I'm just used to like taking him in the tenth round for the last like five years. I don't know, um, Theo. What's your what are your thought? Like, are you are you assuming Cook is definitely gone and Madison's fine in, in the seventh? Unless they have some like makeup, it seems like that's the way it's heading. I just I don't necessarily trust him. Um, you know, like you've been doing this a long time, Adam. This is like the the Chase Edmonds, the like the Mike Davis. Like, this is the next guy in. He's got to get carries kind of thing. But we've never seen Madison have, like, a full a full workload. We've seen him do it really well, like, for, like, two weeks at a time. And he was ne never able to earn any touches in games where, where Cook was there. So, I don't know. I don't, I don't necessarily trust it. I guess in this range, um, it's kind of easier to, to take him. But I think he could steam up a little bit more, and then it would be um, kind of a little dangerous, I think. Yeah, I'm I'm a Madison guy. I don't really question his talent. And even for me to be in the seventh round, be like, man, that you're like you're not getting any, you're not getting a ton of uh of, of closing value, as the kids like to say these these days. So um I would I'd prefer him in like the eighth, the eighth or ninth, but um I mean it's like Mike, how high do you think? Well, you're you're on the clock here. Oh, um, come on. <laughs> Breeze, I thought you were taking Johnston. I want. I wanted Evans. I'm sorry. Was there a question for me uh, that was just no, uh, no. posed? I will. I will. I, will, I, will I can't ask the either because you guys are back to back. Oh, I'm wondering how much higher you think Madison will end up going uh, if Cook leaves. Like, do you think he'll just go to the Cook spot here at the 505? And oh, I think probably close. Right? Probably like um, early sixth round. Yeah, early to mid sixth. I think he'll settle in. I don't see him steaming up that that high. Um, into the fifth, 
Because if they, people were taking Dalvin Cook here, you know, with question marks about where he's at, I don't think that Madison can leap him. Well, I think if th- there's ambiguity in, in both situations. So yeah, I that's think, a good I point. Think, I think Madison could go maybe the fourth um, if people are really aggressive because Cook, the bottom will fall out. Um, yeah, so depending on a little bit more. Goes. Yeah, I think depending on where Cook goes. But I think Madison, yeah, he could get up to the, you know, the Kenneth Walker range for sure. Um, Dobbins range. Yeah, I mean, I think that's where he could definitely uh, fall in here. So Mike goes Alvin Kamara. At the eight eight oh nine, and uh, Theo goes Devin A Chain, another guy, guy that I took. We've got a lot of similar picks when I picked from the one oh one. So A Chain, Kamara or Mike Kamara, are you uh, are you going to draft based on him missing the first half a season or so? I, I mean, that is still to be determined, but I'm assuming that there's going to be some suspension. But I think I can handle that. I think there, that makes a little bit tighter toward the end, like fewer guys that you feel like you need because you don't want to cut him. Like you can't do that. So I have Olave. I wanted Evans. I thought that was kind of perfect. But, you know, you can't get everything you want. Um, yeah, I like Kamara as a running back three in this range because who knows? And if you're going to bet on that offense like I'm kind of doing, then he's part of it. He didn't. He he didn't. When he played last year, he didn't look great. I mean, he looked like yeah. he lost something. Um. So. Yeah, I think we talked about that a lot last year. Was I? He. Didn't, I don't think he was having fun playing football. Like that team stunk, <laughs> and he just you know from being on a team with Drew Brees and lighting it up and competing every week to the situation they had last year. You know, getting banged up as a running back is just not fun. Um. But uh, yeah, A chain. Talk to me about A chain, Theo. I, I took him as a uh, and a pretty similar build as my RB three. I mean, there's a lot to like there. I think that there's been some buzz about him as a receiver um, in the OTAs, and I really liked him a lot. Like on player profiler, I had him as a guy that I was really high on um, in this rookie class, and then he had like the nuts landing spot. So if if you see either Wilson or, or Mostert go down. Um, I think a chain's going to, I mean, be a, be an RB two, uh, for those weeks. I really do. I really think he's going to have RB two weeks this season. Uh, maybe not for the entire, entire year, but I think that like, there's going to be, uh, a period of time where you're really comfortable with him in your lineup. Hopefully it's at the end. He's really fun. Yeah. He's, he's maybe my favorite rookie for just sort of the fun quotient, uh, on that team, what he can do. There's not an established running back there. So um, I'm excited about him too. I would say the same. I would say like Spears is close if Henry weren't there anymore. But uh, I'm excited to see what A-Chain looks like. And then uh, Quentin Johnston, Zay Flowers to turn, and then right back with another young, possibly, hopefully exciting running back, James Cook for the Bills. You think he's got that uh, that lead role locked up, Theo? He's he's my preferred pick of the the Bills running backs. I I definitely after Mike picks, I'd love to hear his thoughts on on Cook right now and yours as well, Adam. But um, I liked him. I think that if he just absorbs the Devin Singletary receiving work, um, he's going to be interesting. I think that there's that the like Harris has kind of steamed up, um, but Harris, you know, I get like Harris is is a solid running back, but he doesn't have any sort of like receiving upside. Um, Cook has it, so I, I don't know. I'm I'm slightly bullish on on James Cook and Dynasty, and it's definitely carrying over to this draft. At that price, I mean, you can't really. There's not a lot of downside. Yeah, I, I saw on Fantasy Mojo he's going you know higher. Um, so right here it seemed pretty good. Yeah, seven twelves is ADP on that right now. Heck yeah, awesome. I would have. I mean, Cook and. Camara are right there together, but for me, it was simply that I have Olave. That was it. And Mike, where are you on like the situation in in Buffalo with the the running backs? Are you taking shots on Harris, or are you you know still leaning Cook? I go round and round on that Theo because like I think Harris. So I'm more like sort of the PFF guy than Adam is, and PFF has loved Damian Harris. Like for me. $1.4 million, million 
who knows what that means in terms of what kind of investment they think they have in him. But I think he's really good. And I just never liked what I read on Cook as a prospect. So as a rookie, he was pretty efficient, you know, part-time, but still never really took over with Singletary there. I mean, I think it's a really tough puzzle. So I have some Cook, but I'm, I'm not somebody who's leaning into him because I think Harris is probably the better player and Latavius Murray and Naheem Hines and like, who knows? And they're going to throw the ball more than any other team in the league. So um, I think Cook is a fine pick there and the value there again, like makes it an easy, an easy pick. Um, But I like drafting Harris more. He's like a round cheaper maybe. And if he stays on the field, I think he's like the power back. They don't have to use Allen in the goal line stuff. I love drafting him. Yeah. I mean, I I get the, like, I guess the the bull argument would be he could be this year's Jamal Williams, a guy who just gets yep. double digit touchdowns, and it doesn't matter what he runs for, um, because he has. And he's, he's kind of done it. He's kind of done it, right? What? How many touchdowns did he have two years ago? Right, yeah. Harris. So. Yeah. No, I. I. It's it's tough. Do these backfields are like this? I feel like usually the younger guy ends up the younger pass catching guy kind of comes through, but yeah, I think, and Damien Harris is better than Devin Singletary. So um, I could see him getting some goal line work there for sure. But I just love the excitement of James. Cook. I think he was second in the league in yards per carry. So, yeah. uh, and then Mike, you take Brandon cooks there. I love the cooks pick. Um, he's good. He's still not like super old, although I feel like he's been around forever because he's been traded like six times. Um, is this just a, Hey, I, I, I got to get my best available uh, wide receiver. Yes. Score? Yeah. Yes. Best available receiver. And Michael Thomas was next. And I was sort of hoping he would go in front of me. So I wouldn't have to worry about that because I've got enough saints. You and I just did a draft where we drafted five saints. <laughs> like just, I, I don't want to be all, I'm not like, I don't want to be saints guy, but um, yeah, <laughs> cooks was a little bit ahead on ADP. So I was happy to do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the think- drinks, the drinks kicking in. Can I just the lull in the action? If I just might say it's Memorial Day week, it's my favorite holiday. I've been sipping on this martini for three hours. Yes. Respect for how much is left, but I am feeling it. <laughs> Respect for listen. There's four guys in the pod mug. You can just go to the green I, room and we'll see. No, what- I want to. I want to be with you guys, but I'm. I'm just. I can hear myself sort of rushing and mumbling a little bit, and I just want to have me be the one to say i have noticed that before you guys do i would never i would never say that um brian robinson rb38 khalil herbert who i really like he's might have been the best running back last year in chicago deshaun watson chigosium Aconquo, oh elijah, baby elijah moore Jamal well done ken ken Jamal. i learned i learned from you i learned from you well done. You guys don't say you guys don't say chig on the deep end. You guys are you guys no, are close, not, never. <laughs> We're all about yes, Alberto Quabenham on this show. By yeah, the way. no, That's no Alberto on ideas. the deep end. <laughs> Is chig the Alberto of 2023? I don't know. Ooh, pro- probably. Ooh, come probably. on, Darren. Got Tennessee, but they don't get. I mean, weekend. They, they don't have any other options just outside of Burks. So Burks, yeah. That's right. That's why you would think. Well, there, there's an interesting conversation. I heard the underdog underdog guys talking about this, Josh and Hayden, about like he wasn't on the field that much. But one thing to always bring up in these is like, well, that can change if they were impressed with his talent. Maybe they increase his role. But there are good questions, I think, being asked about him. Yeah. Yeah. And again, it's just that there's when you get to this tight end range, it's always like we can always make, Hey, this guy's going to be good. Here's why this guy's going to be bad. Here's why. And most of them aren't going to be good. You might get what, like last year, this was like the Evan Ingram range, maybe a little bit later at this time of year, Evan Ingram was going, you know, 12th, 13th round. He crept up into this range by the end of August. And he was obviously a smash, but um, so yeah, we'll see with Chig uh, Dalton Schultz, Jarek McKinnon, Juju Smith, Schuster, Roshan Johnson, uh, David and Joku, Rashad Bateman in the tenth round every time. Sam Laporta, Cortland Sutton, and there he is. Damian Harris he is. puts his money where his mouth is. Damian Harris to uh, the deep end to Jamison Williams, who yeah. found his home in the tenth round, um, and then Dak Dak Prescott to Theo. Um, that's Theo. nice. Yeah, that's nice. Is he kind of your last? Uh, QB in that tier after Deshaun. Uh, I like having him with Pollard. 
um, have a little bit of correlation there, especially with the receiving upside there with, with no Schultz. Um, I would have probably taken Jamison Williams there. I think that's really like, if you feel pretty strong about your wide receivers, I think that that could be like the hammer in this range. Um, so I'm bullish on him there. I like the Rashad Bateman um, value there in the 10th as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't hate getting Dak there. Yeah, no, I think it's, a, I think it's a, a great pick. QB 11. I think he'll be right in there uh, for, for, for sure. Um, Cole Komet here, the tight end number one for the 101. No stack yet. No quarterback for team at the 101. Um, again, take another. Yeah. This team should take, take another, right? For sure. This might be that whole, hey, two tight ends and two quarterbacks in a row on the end. Right. That's what a lot of teams. Is there a have, guy here? Have been doing. Yes, to Daniel Jones, the, the quarterback. Is there, sure. <laughs> oh, well, there, there he goes. Um, but no, you're right. That's that's what teams have been doing, kind of taking, stacking the t- tight ends, quarterbacks on the turns. Darren, have you been seeing. So Anthony Richardson here goes QB9. Uh, at the beginning of the eighth, uh, I think his ADP's been kind of flying up the boards at least on these last nine twelve. I, I don't know, man. That's that, as your QB one in this. I mean, he might he might not start right out of the gate. Um, so you can figure that guy's going to back back grab another quarterback that's startable. I mean, yeah. if you guys, if you guys remember, like there was the the late drafts. Um, when Justin Fields was the uh, was heading into his rookie season, where there was like a lot of steam to get to get Fields as your QB one, and then you would just add a veteran later. I don't know. I I love Anthony Richardson though. I mean, I think that it's hard not to see him putting up a number of rushing yards at the very least, like a ton of them. He could play, but how good is he going to be? Like if if you you know if that's your guy, this is a short regular season too. Yeah, it might take a while for him to like get going. So he's twenty. He's twenty years old. But like you know, so if 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 he's if he's sure maybe he plays. But if he's not getting you twenty points a game, that could really hurt you in this format. Yeah. Well, I think if you like like Theo said, you're not going to take naked quarterback with Richardson. You take another veteran that can get you through the first couple of weeks, and then Richard. I mean, Rich. I personally think Richardson is going to start from week week one. I mean, he's gonna rut. He's gonna. To me, it's not even the yards. Like if he's, if he rushes for ten touchdowns and like six, seven hundred yards. I mean, he's like he's a weekly QB one. So I think, yeah, you take him and then you take. I was gonna say Kirk Cousins, but he just he just went. But you take another veteran later. I think you're you're okay there, and it, and you're playing for those money weeks when, uh, when he's gonna be in there, and he's got a good old line. He's got good you know good weapons around him he's not on like the you know like the panthers aren't very good and those those other quarterbacks that went to those other teams that just lack weapons i think he's got a good offense around around him there and a coach that did it with with jalen hurts so i think is the big difference well a, a key variable in the fields comparison like fields walked into a situation where they always acted like they hated him I mean, it was right. Andy Dalton starting, and it was it was uh, Nagy, right? Like, it was just the most incompetent, no weapons, the worst situation a quarterback could have. Then year two, fine, better, but still, like, a coaching change. Like, Darnold had that three times in his first four years. Like, just what a mess. Richardson lines up with a new coach who's, like, maybe sharp. The oh, he's very offense, sharp. With- right. Like, a coach yeah, but- who's sort of there for him. And you have good weapons in a dome. I love it. Cody Carpentier was on our show talking about the rookies for the draft. He's like, if he starts week one, he will rush for 1,200 yards, not 700, 1,200. Yeah. So if he can find, if Pittman gets open and Pierce, and they have 70 tight ends always who are kind of huge and amazing, like Donovan Taylor, weak division. I don't want to overpay for Richardson, but I love him at cost. Yeah, it's, it's, it's super interesting. I mean, Cody and I talked about this as well. I mean, I think that he's his rushing floor is is right there. And then you bring up like Shane Steichen. He was the one that was with Justin Herbert during his ascent. Um, and then, you know, obviously what he did with Jalen Hurts. So he's sort of like the quarterback whisperer. If he goes three for three, then it's like, you know, mm. he's the man. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, yeah. He grabbed Russell Wilson, so he's got 
a safe option, you know. Yeah, there you go. Well, a few weeks. A veteran, a veteran option, at least. What are your uh, What are your guys' takes on, on like? Is he just a guy that we're just flipping a coin? Like, hey, he's going to come back, or he's not going to like? I, I'm so. I think in the the draft I did the last time I looked, like the seventh, seventh round, he was still available. And I, I already had two quarterbacks, but um, I just feel like I just don't know what to do with the Denver situation. Theo, where are you there? I mean, there's arguments that he he closed the year very well, and he had like two, you know, top five weeks to end the year. I don't know. I think once these guys start to look bad, um, it's kind of wishful thinking, just oftentimes to see to want them to like bounce back. But I I certainly think that the offense stylistically is going to do things to help him. Um, you know, I like I like Marvin Mims a lot. I like the Samaj P Ryan addition. Um, they've done a couple of interesting things. Dulcich, I think year two could be interesting. Um, and obviously, you know, having some stability, it was such a poor fit last year. So I don't know. I, he's not a guy I'm actively, uh, targeting. Um, I kind of would have preferred the, the Geno Smith selection there for, uh, team number 11, but I get it. I mean, Russell Wilson's, he absolutely could bounce back and return, you know, top 10, uh, quarterback value this year. I like Peyton Cohen going there. I think that, yeah, that'll, that'll help yeah, straighten him absolutely. out. Absolutely. You're absolutely right on that. Yep, uh, which I hope because they have a lot of weapons there that I like. I love. Um, I love a lot of the, a lot of the receivers there. Obviously, well, we uh, all just bet him to win Coach of the Year right now. Is right. there a scenario where he looks bad? Like <laughs> if Wilson is bad, it's on Wilson, and if they're good, he wins. He's nine to one to win Coach of the Year in states where it's legal. I mean, it's Sean Payton who's won a Super Bowl. He's already considered really good in the first place. Like he is in great. What a smart guy to take the biggest coach money in history and set yourself up in a you know a great market and have there be no scenario where you look bad. Smart guy. He had a bar yeah. so low. <laughs> so. Bar right. so low, right? They're in Kansas City's division. If they're nine and eight, he, that's a big step up for Denver. Like just he can't go wrong for one year. That's it. Um. All right, to start starting the twelfth round, a uh, court little little quarterback run here. Tua, Russell Wilson, Jalen Warren, Jonathan Mingo, Gerald Everett, then Geno Smith um, as QB sixteen. I like that. Greg Dulcich, Romeo Dobbs, and Darnell Mooney to the deep end too. Mike got another followed up following Rashi Rice as your uh, wide receiver in the round before that. Are you a uh, best available receiver here or do you like Mooney specifically rice kind of was but i'm a little bit with hooks you know you're a little bit older rice is an upside play i won't start him right away mooney for fields i was hoping for him like a round earlier but that's about where he goes so that just fell right yeah and for fields to have probably have a massive year like you like you're looking for mooney's gonna have to be i mean everyone loved not everyone, a lot of people loved Mooney last year just because of the expected target volume. And then he just it ended up not working out, like you said, with the play calling and stuff, stuff like that. And he he got hurt, obviously. So, but uh, if he can bounce back as the like a, the number two there, um, that might be a nice play. Wide, wide receiver 56. Um, yeah. Like, is he good? I don't know if he's good, but it's more who they, who is good and they invested in. And then after that, who knows, right? Claypool or Komet, like Mooney has been with Fields, so I think there's some some hope there. Yeah, the yeah. other thing you got to like, let's keep in mind this this the format of this. This isn't best ball, and what we know in the sprint is the guys who s- succeed there are the quarterbacks who have these elite receivers and smash. I don't think Richardson, like even if he runs, like. Who's he connecting with that, you know, I, I just, that, that's not a profile in this format, I don't think. So any of these You say guys, that about, about the Bears too? Like, is that the same thing? I think Fields is in a little better spot. He's got DJ Moore. You could at least tell yourself right. a story. It could happen. Um, But you, you always see that, that they have that connection. So you're just so down. You're just down on his pass because, I mean, he does have Michael Pittman. Are you just down on his, on his, Throwing upside you year one, like just like Justin Fields and um, uh, Jalen Hurts and Josh Allen. 
Well, the, well, yeah, Fields is not good, but Hertz has the weapon, so that's why he excelled. Um, and Mahomes has Kelsey. I mean, they're, they're different levels, but these are the guys who win the tournaments. Like last year, I'm, I'm looking the top two finishers. They but they had the Mahomes Kelsey stack. Um, then the next guy had Hertz, and the fourth place finisher had Hertz. So it would be tough. Like it's you, this guy's not. You're not just do it riding with one team, so it's fine to mix it up, but you got to keep in mind the profile of what you're shooting for as well. Yep. Uh, Tur- Turf Burglar, also the defense burglar. I think he takes the first defense off the board with Philly in the 13th round. Theo, Chuba Hubbard, a guy that I also took. It, you know, we're, oh, we're, to we're, in lock, we're in lockstep. That's I guess that's really good, Adam, right. or it, this time of year it could be really bad. <laughs> But I'd like to think that that it's really, really good. I what mean, do I don't love Chuba to? Hubbard, but I think that you know he's a he's a clear handcuff. He's probably a little bit devalued um, right now. Uh, we know what he is, and if Miles Sanders goes down, he's he's a he's a running back too. So I mean, I'm not like I don't love him, but I'd have him in this range. I mean, when he's in this range, I think you'd make a case to take him a round or two earlier. Yeah, I mean, he's a guy that, you know, when it was him and Foreman going back and forth last year once they got rid of CMC, and he had some monster weeks, you know, in between injuries and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I like him there for sure. I mean, Miles Sanders hasn't been able to really capture a running back role before, so uh, maybe Chuba does have some uh, some value all by, all by himself. I, I like him as kind of one of these really good handcuff running backs or one of these, you know, backup running back types. Quite the running back run here in the 13th round after Jalen Hyatt goes off the board. Chuba Hubbard, again, Philly defense. Deonta Foreman, speak of the, speak of the devil. Uh, Irv Smith. Tajay new favorite team. The, the Saints were last week. This is our new favorite team right here. Those. This That's team right. with a C and the <laughs> – Tajay Bears. Spears. Go Bears. Jeff now, Wilson. Now we're hitting the, uh, the, the run in, in these fantasy pros drafts where – People start grabbing all the backup running backs. Um, they yeah, they've been doing. It. I mean, uh, at, at this point, because we a lot of times we don't know. It's Dar- Damian Harris, Roshan Johnson, you know, Tyler Algier, Tank Bigsby, Elijah Mitchell. It's a lot of the. Hey, I'm going to throw a dart at one of these handcuffs and and wait. Yeah. And that's the kind of strategy you really want to use here in May. Is you want to go uh, from a macro look. You really want to go non running backs early and 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 look for these late running backs and look for injuries, right? Like you're it's, waiting. Yeah. That's what you want to do. You want to get that, that injury that boosts your running back pickup, you know, you know, six or seven rounds even. I mean, you look, God, God forbid, Bijan Robinson goes down. If he goes down, Algiers going in like the seventh or sixth round or maybe even higher. So he goes down next week. Hello, Ezekiel Elliott or Kareem Hunt or Leonard that's Fournette. True, true. Yeah. You know, right. Like timing, timing's everything. Too, those, yeah. those guys, not Atlanta is not the point, but, just those guys are really interesting. It's still May, and they'll all be on teams, I think. Right? So, how much different of a play is Kareem Hunt than you know these Saturday rookies? You're just taking shots, and then you're just going to dump. You know, you're you're investing in these guys over the course of the summer, and then that first waiver run, you're just going to purge and that's it. Replace the guys who don't hit. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the Acres, Dobbins. Those sort of injuries are going to happen. They happen every year. Exactly. And this is the time of year you want to be on, you know, be on this type of drafting style so you can really take take advantage of that. So um, Mike coming up around the clock. So we'll run this to the I'm up. I'm ready. Go Sorry. go ahead. Do it. That, was, that was loud. Taking care of car. <laughs> oh, there he is, this guy. His, his I don't guy. have a Saints helmet. No. <laughs> you, you, don't, you don't have a Saints. Do you, you have a Bears helmet? You got a Bears helmet back there somewhere? Right here. Oh, there it is. He brought it up. Is that Walter Payton? Who is that? Who, who Richard Dent. That? Richard, Richard Dent. Dent of course. I have the Super Bowl MVPs. Was so Richard, Richard Dent a Dent. Super Bowl MVP? He was. Wow. Super Bowl 20. Incredible. Um, so we will run this to the end of round 15 here. Um, thanks, thanks, Theo and uh Darren. For Thank you guys. Yes. Oh, yeah. My pleasure, yeah. man. We'll run this to the end of 15 and then we'll all we'll all get out of here. Um, so Derek Carr, Kenneth Gainwell, Turk uh, Burglar, uh, sniped me on that one. I was going to take no. Gainwell with Swift. That, that guy, 
the 1411 uh, 1410 swipe. You got to love that. <laughs> the, the worst <laughs> uh, holiday weekend. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Darren, before we get out of here, this last round here, any, uh, I know you've been watching the last two drafts, any kind of overall observations other than uh, uh, running back kind of being pushed up here? You know, I just, the, the, the stacks and the correlations always are sticking out to me. Um, so this is the, well, both of the drafts you're in, you saw Kelsey Mahomes and yeah. that's, that's, I mean, it's a great stack, but it's the most in most populous stack. I think I was looking 30, there's 30, 36 of the drafts have a, a Mahomes Kelsey stack. It's like wow. 40% of the team, 40% of the yeah. leagues have that. Yeah. So it's just easy. It just lines up perfectly for you. Like you can have it um, pretty much every draft. That's why you see it. Uh, yeah, makes sense. Well, Darren, like how do you feel about stacking in this? Like to what extent should you go? Because in the best ball world, you see just insane correlation stuff. We've all had our fun with that. I mean, is it something – how seriously, like one to ten, do you take it in this? I I, I think it's pretty important – if you want to win the whole thing. Um, Cause if you, if you think, think about the end of the year and we're looking at that leaderboard, the final week, right? It's, it's, if you look at the top hundred teams, 60 or 70 of them will have a, a quarterback receiver, yeah. like the common ones. Like last year, I think it was now Hertz ended up getting hurt. Um, but all those guys had Hertz, Devonta Smith, you know, so that's you just got to be in the right one. Um, yeah, so and even, pretty and, important. And even like Alan Diggs was smashing all year until the like I had it, so many Diggs Adams teams that just yeah. died that yeah. made the playoffs and just those those guys died over the last three weeks. But a lot of those Alan Diggs teams crushed all year and they they could have made some noise too. Um, all right, so the turn here, Fournette. Pierre Strong, Kante Ingram, Jaden Reed, Adam Thielen. We're getting into – yeah, we're getting, into, we're getting late here. Although I do like J- J- Jaden Reed a lot. Um, yeah. Possibly. Theo, what are your – I know you're a dynasty guy. What are your Jaden Reed? No, I, I really like I really like Jaden Reed. Um, I do think Keontae Ingram is a little bit devalued um, as a – you know, one of these – to me, he's the clear handcuff there uh, behind a, a slightly older running back that I think is going to get an exceptional amount of volume to start the year. So, like – I feel like Ingram, he'll rise a little bit. He's he's kind of like Jerome Ford. He should be closer to that range. Um, so I would have considered Jaden Reed. He was definitely in the queue. There you go. Um, Ingram is a pretty, like, that's a flag plant, isn't it? I mean, are you facing any sort of resistance when it comes to him? or No, not really. I mean, I think he's, if if you look at the roster, I think it's, unless they bring someone in, and certainly, you know, you can make a case for that. Um, but unless they bring someone in, I think he's it. And it was a very small sample size, but he kind of looked the part. And uh, he was a had a, had a lot of pedigree in college. He went from Texas to USC, kind of escaping Bijan Robinson. But he can also catch the ball. So I think if if James Conner goes down, I think he's sort of a like for like uh, replacement. Um, I don't know six yeah, rounders, so you can't get like two attached to him. Uh, but he's he's definitely interesting. It's good. There's a lot of uh, all the hype around Jerome Ford, which I mean, yeah. if you think about it, mm-hmm. which which back up to Nick Chubb is really, it's 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 a, yeah, I think it's a roster clogger spot. And if you're a fan of Farrell Elliott, he had some really bad things to say about Jerome Ford because <laughs> Farrell's have- a scout, right? So he's yeah. like he saw a lot of Jerome Ford, and he did not have nice things to say about him. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. I'll, I'll have to I'll have to look that one up because I like hearing Farrell's takes on some of these uh some of these guys. Yeah, he's he's uh he's a scout and I think he's a uh, he's part of an, like an agent too. Like he gets yeah, all an agent. Yeah, he's, he's an, an agent, agent, not a scout, but he's he's watching all these guys. Yeah, he talks to he 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 always has like one guy. Like I remember Kadarius Tony's rookie year. He's like, watch out for Tony. He's really good. When everyone was kind of dogging him, and Tony ended up being good. And I'm, he's done this a couple times. Um with some of those kind of deep sleeper players, uh, Kenny Galladay, his rookie year, he was like, Hey, Kenny Galladay is going to be going to be good. So yeah, no, Farrell, Farrell's really good with stuff like that. Or uh, we wrap. I just want to yeah. say prison Mike, who I, you know, he's a, he's a player. He's at eight running backs. 
Wow. After going zero RB in the first draft. Right. Right. He drafted one of the first six rounds here, and he's up to eight. Totally. He's mixing it up. But, hey, he's got his elite QB, his elite tight end, and a couple of good think- receivers in there. Shout yeah, out to prison, prison Mike is a very active uh, FFPC dynasty manager as well, guys. He's in a lot of leagues. Nice. There you go. Good. Yeah. Love it. Just he's prepared to super grind here, right? Like just there'll be moves. If you have eight running backs, you might want to cut three in the first week, whatever it is. I don't know, but um, taking his shots. It looks like a Hubbard draft. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it's Hubbard. <laughs> It could be Hubbard. Yeah, maybe Prison Mike is Hubbard. <laughs> maybe he's getting coached by Hubbard. <laughs> Sounds about right. Um, all right, before we go, Darren, talk to the – I know everyone probably knows who you are and where to find you, but uh, tell, tell the people where to find Darren Armani, a.k.a. Fantasy Mojo. Go to FantasyMojo.com. It's all things FFPC, uh, ADPs, draft boards, analysis of tournaments, um, it's a complete archive of, of the data going back to, you know, I think 2011, we pretty much have all the, the drafts in the ADP. Um, it, Stack Explorers, just go, just, just go to the website. There's On the front page, there's the virtual tour, and that'll show you um, everything that we have to offer. It's pretty simple. Darren, are you going to be at the Expo this, this year? I will mm. be at the Expo. Um and I will be in Vegas, and I'm thinking about going to Kentucky. I'm not sure yet. Oh, I'll be oh, in Kentucky. You already know that. So, um, love two it. Two out of three ain't bad for us. <laughs> two out I'll of be three. in Canton and Vegas, but maybe not Kentucky. Um, and yeah, t- so I don't. I don't do an effort. I will be in Bethesda, Maryland tomorrow morning. By the way, I haven't mentioned that yet. Shut up. That's that's very very uh very interesting, Mike. I'm uh. I'm I'm heading out early tomorrow, so we're just passing each other. Right? Oh, that's interesting, man. What brings you down to Bethesda, Maryland? No, I'm not really going to Bethesda, Maryland. I was going to see your parents, but oh, I, but you're you're you leaving, that, so I'm not going to do that. There. You got me there, Mike. Right tomorrow is it... right outside of Washington D.C. For anybody who doesn't know the Love geography it. of the state of Maryland, but uh, yeah, this was awesome tonight, man. Um, shout out to Fantasy Mojo, Darren. Darren crushes it. I'm on Fantasy Mojo this time of year. I'm legitimately on Fantasy Mojo every single day. So if you don't subscribe to it, you should subscribe to it. Um, and yeah, you can catch me here on Player Profiler. Um, you know, I'm on the Sonic Truth Dynasty podcast with Matt Kelly, First Class Fantasy with Billy Muzio. I have a solo podcast called Press Coverage starting uh, ideally the first week of June, but I'm a little busy with the the draft kit. And then you can find me on the Goat District every single week. And you can find me here in the FFPC streets, guys. I'm going to be drafting a lot, going head to head with you guys. That that's it, and I don't do like you said. I don't do an FFPC draft without uh, the Mojo ADP board up. I just it's it's up to date. It's up to almost up to the hour. You know, Dude, every up. morning I'm up at six a.m. It's like a ritual. Yeah, making the data for the people. Love it. It's fantastic, Darren. You you put a lot of work into it, but it's awesome. It's awesome. Memorial Day every July day, fourth every Christmas. day. No days. As soon off. as the season starts, it's a relief because I don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> no days off Theo, thank you for your support of our show and darren all your support through the years too really appreciate you guys thank you very much love what you guys are doing it's going to be a great summer on the deep end i can't wait to listen to all your episodes thanks guys so on behalf right, thank of you the deep end thanks for joining in we'll we'll, we'll post the draft board and uh and uh, yeah we're going to do a bunch more of these so we will uh catch you guys on tuesday night have a good one happy right, memorial day take care guys